Recorded live. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Movement Boxing Podcast, where we bring you the latest and greatest in boxing news, unfiltered, unbiased, uncut, unfiltered. You know how we do it. Uh, man, we had a nice little weekend in boxing, man. So before we get started on these topics, let me introduce my panel and co-hosts as usual, man. Uh, we're going to start with 2K, the guy from the guys of boxing talk. What's going on with you, man? On the contrary, it's Prodigy of Boxing Talk. No longer the guys of Boxing Talk. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. I stand corrected. <laughs> I will remember that. I'll be sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, we also got our cohorts from uh, the Truth and Facts about Boxing. Uh, what's going on, Bo and Bernard? Hey, what's we're going on? The why? reason why he's no longer the guy because we're the real shit around here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to say this, though. Let me say this real quick. The movement is undefeated, still undefeated. That's all I want to say right there. Yeah, we, we uh, what, 38 weeks in the show. Uh, so, yeah, we still we still doing it, man. Handing uh, out tails. Yes, we sir. Be young, we be these young lines, hungry lines, man. Let me go ahead and uh, introduce the last of our panel. We got Big Cool from Colossal Boxing Talk. What's going on, man? Hey, man. I'm good, man. Glad to be back on. Glad to see we got 2K Big Head ass back on the show. Leave me alone, man. That nigga had morning sickness. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> All right, let's get going, man. We go ahead and jump into to these topics, man. We gonna start off with um some of the fights we had over the weekend, the reviewing them. Um, man, there's so much to talk about with these, but let's go ahead and get started with the uh, Clarissa Shields versus Victoria LeBlanc for uh, the WBC silver. Super middleweight title, um, which happened on Friday in Detroit, man. Uh, she won the unanimous decision. Uh, Clarissa Shields, that is. Um, I'm not sure how to, who had a chance to see this fight. I actually watched it a couple of days ago. Um, I'm not sure about you guys. Uh, um, who had a chance to watch this one? I watched. It. I watched a little bit of it. <clears throat> All right, uh, anything you could chime in on as far as what you saw from Clarissa and what you think about her, you know, in her young young career right now? I mean, from what I've seen, she didn't really go to the body as much as I would like to, you know, see her go. It was all head shots. And I think that, man, if she don't get, you know, pulled back and can kind of control her output, uh, her output she's going to tire out because she was just balls to the wall, squaring herself up, you know, ripping shots. I mean, she showed a good offensive, you know, repertoire in terms of, uh, you know, different punch selections. But she didn't really go to the body only, like, three or four times that I've seen. And against better competition, she's going to get caught in exchanges. She's going to tire, tire her out. And she's not going to be able to, you know, pull back and kind of adjust on the fly because she's all seeking to destroy. And these fighters are watching it. And maybe she's just not as – she's not going to be as dominant as we want her to be, you know what I'm saying, because you're supposed to – you know, improve each and every time. It doesn't matter who you're facing. You know what I'm saying? With her putting out the same type of performance, it just let me know that she just looks at everybody as easy picking and instead of getting these KOs, she's going, you know, the distance. So she probably doesn't have the power that we thought she may have at the pro level. But, I mean, I still got some hope for it. But she needs to kind of just slow it down and, and box more and, and let the KO come to her instead of exerting all her energy um, in the first two minutes of the fight, trying to get a KO. All right, uh, anybody else have a chance to see this one? Uh, I know TK said he didn't have a chance to watch this one already. Um, Bo and Bernard, did you guys have a chance to watch this one? No, I didn't get a chance to see it. Okay, um, so well, I'll ask you to Go ahead, Go ahead Joe. I, I, I didn't get a chance to watch it. Um, telling me it was the same last two fights. She didn't look, you know, any different than she did in those two fights, and it's primarily, I guess, her competition because I don't know the girl that she fought. So um, one thing I want to say is that they're trying to put her on the fast track to go 
go up against Christina Hammer, who's arguably one of the top five pound for pound fighters in women's boxing right now. Um, and you know, you say a lot of shit on other on other podcasts or other videos or whatnot. And when you get back on different shows, you rinse and repeat what you've already said just to get this shit clear to people who are listening or new or new listeners. You know what I'm saying? I said it before. I'll say it again. She does not need to be going anywhere near Christina Hammer until she has at least 10 fucking fights. That's all I'm going to say about this shit, man, for real. I, I, they, they're they trying their hard to throw on the Lomachenko track for the women's uh, side of boxing, but I don't think this is a good idea for her, man. I agree. Um, yeah, I'd actually have to agree with uh with both of you guys with uh everything both of you guys said as far as her performance and uh as far as how they're they're fast tracking her and what they, you know, should do actually with her with her career. Um it boils down to I don't know if she's listening to her trainers, I don't know if it's her trainers telling her to do this, but she uh man, she still fights like an amateur's pace, you know what I'm saying? Like you got yeah. you got the you know you got to get all that output out there and them doing what the three what is the three rounds with the uh, women's and the uh, in the amateurs. Yeah, it was the same as it is with the dudes that they go well five I think. Yeah, the um, dudes go five, and then it's okay. two minutes. Yeah, so I mean, she's still fighting like you know she's on she's got to put out all that energy like she's only got a couple rounds and I'm like you know she she needs to pace herself. She does. She throws all power shots too. Like it's not enough off the jab. Um, you know, I actually watched the whole fight. A uh, bit cool. She she uh, did do a lot of hooks. Throw a lot of hooks to the body. Um, you know, if you uh, towards the end or you know the latter half of the fight, you know, so she did show different things as far as fighting on the inside, which is something she hasn't really done in her other fights. But I think that was just her working on things against a a lesser opponent. You know, uh, in LeBlanc. Cause she she hit her with every damn thing, you know. Um, but that was another thing as far as picking her shots, you know. Um, I seen her do a couple things as far as trying to throw hooks around the guard. So I, I see her thinking in the ring now a little bit better as far as picking her shots. But like I said, she's not working off the jab enough. It's all power shots, and it's too much. I mean, it's too high pace, you know. Like she needs to pace herself to go. These uh, you know, these eight rounds and what that she'll go against uh, Christina Hammer will be what a ten round fight. So I mean, she needs to work on her work thing, to work, 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 working on her, yeah, working on her jab. You know, that would actually be better for her as far as pacing herself in the, you know, in the out run of out uh, run of these fights. But you know, but, but from what I'm hearing, and from the one fight I saw, it I, I hate to say it, but it does to me it seem like she's regressing because. She didn't look like this in the amateur. No, and it definitely, I agree. And it, def, and it definitely seems like she's regressing, and there's a reason, there's an unknown specific reason no, why that nobody is either pointing out to her or, uh, or or she's trying to change the way she fights to be more exciting, but whatever it is, it's going to get her fucking hurt. Because yeah. like you said, wait, I, I'm not even thinking about fuck Christina Hammer. I'm thinking about uh, uh, Mighty Sailor. Who is tall and rangy and know how to keep her maintain distance with that experience? She will fuck around and take this girl out if she wanted to go fight her. She probably so, she'll probably skip her if they're going on the fast track. They're gonna skip her. That's true. That's too much risk. <laughs> exactly. That's too much risk. You know, but from what I'm hearing, everything I've been hearing about her fights, she's regressing. And from uh, apparently she's gonna fight again in August. I'm like, that's a hell of yeah. a fucking turnaround, man. They're, yeah. She's, Especially she's, if you not getting better. Man. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I don't know if it's her not listening to her corner, if it's just not her corner being adequate enough to to tell her these things as far as pace. Honestly, man, I think it's just honestly, I think it's her. Period. Yeah, I don't. I I, I think it's her, man. If you look at some of the things she say and, and some of her responses, I think it's her. I think it's her trying to prove. I, I think it's her trying to prove something. Or trying to, you know, make some kind of move or make a mark, and she, she, it's, which is fine, but she's kind of going about it the wrong way. You got to slow down. Yeah, she mm-hmm. definitely has a lot of lofty goals and expectations for herself, so I can't fault her for that. But at, at the same time, like you, you know, we're actually seeing this in her fights already, and she's only what three fights in, and you know, we're we're saying the same things about her as far as her pacing herself and. 
you know, just things that she's not doing. And, you know, these are against lesser opponents. She put her in there against the Christina Hammer. She's not going to be able to do this same kind of thing and, you know, go all out, balls to the wall the way she's been doing. Um, you know, she she tires out because of that. So, I mean, she she definitely has a lot to learn about the pro game. I don't know. Like I said, it, it it's something that even her her corner definitely needs to be talking about. Um, and we'll see what happens in our next couple of fights, but they definitely need to keep her away from Christina Hammer and um, like 2K was saying until, you know, um, she has at least 10 pro fights and, you know, steps it up against higher level competition than this because, I mean, she needs to know that she's not going to be able to get away with a lot of things she's doing now. So, I mean, it's better that she sees that now as opposed to later against the Christina Hammer, um, you know, if she's definitely trying to uh, get, you know, achieve the goals that she's speaking of as far as, uh, you know, winning titles and whatnot, you know, and, uh, you know, boosting the woman's boxing. She definitely needs to go about it uh, the right, right way. Yeah. 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 With that said, man, we're going to move into our uh, other card uh, from the weekend on Saturday night. Start off with the uh, first title fight, man. Uh, there's been a lot happening in that, you know, even today. Um Guillermo Wirgendale, uh took on Moises Flores on uh, Saturday night, defending his uh, WBA Super Bantamweight title and lineal title. Um, man, definitely a strange ending. Um, we thought it was a, uh, it ended in a knockout. Um, well, it was it was ruled a knockout, um, even though um, a punch came after the bell. Um, and I believe it was ruled a no decision this morning, fellas. Am I correct? There's no contest. Yes, sir. Oh, no contest. Yes, my bad. Same shit. Um, yeah. So I mean, um, we actually talked about this on the show uh, on 2K. We did a uh, Saturday night. So I'm gonna let him start first, man. Um, let me get your thoughts on everything as far as the fight, um, what we were seeing, and I mean, Flores Camps has a lot of has a lot of complaints as far as uh, you know about what happened. But you know, let me get your take on it, man. I mean, it's pretty much. Um, I'm glad they changed it over to a no uh, no decision um, because that's what they, it's what it should have been called in the first place. And I think uh, Vic Dracula took a lot of time trying to cover his ass, and they ended up you know being in a situation where a lot of people were uh, uh, providing their input and they didn't really know what really happened, and that influenced his decision and saying it was a knockout at the end of the day. So I'm glad they overturned it, even though. You know, I'm a huge supporter of Rigo, but I call it stay to stay. It should have been a no contest from the jump. Um, as far as the fight, you know, uh, it, it pisses me off because Vic Dracula put a damper on what was to come in the first place, which would have been a legal knockout. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've watched Moises Flores fight a couple of times. I watched him fight Oscar Candon. I watched him fight, a, a, I can't remember his first name, but his last name is Cousalito, which is a fight that I thought he was getting ready to lose, but he knocked him out in the 12th round with 57 seconds left in the fight. Um, I've watched him a couple of times, and what he did in the ring against Rigo, just a, just a lot of different things, actually, not even just in the ring, but leading up to the fight, you know, he just looked nervous to me. Um, you know, before they, they announced his name officially, he was yelling in the air and shit, trying to hype himself up. Then the bell rings, and he comes towards Rigo. He's, he's overextending himself uh, because he's, it, it, it's clear he's nervous and his anxiety level is high because he's trying to kick those nerves. Um, and it was a situation where he, when you looked at Rigo elude those shots, you could tell that uh, Flores' hand speed was slower than Rigo's footwork, which is something that um, if that happens in a fight and you happen to be on the negative end, you about to get your ass whooped for 12 rounds and knocked out. You know what I'm saying? So that's really what was about to happen. Just watching that first round, I was like, my prediction was a knockout for Rigo by eight rounds. Watching the first round, I felt like I needed to move my shit down to maybe three or four rounds, you know, Rigo by knockout. But um, as far as what actually transpired, like I said, it was a, uh, it was Big Dracula's um, um, inability to do his job correctly. And at the end of the day, he was trying to cover for himself. Um, you've got two guys who are in an exchange within 10, 10 seconds left in the fucking round. And Big Dracula is nowhere near the action. Um, the rules are the, the referee, whenever that sound goes off that there's 10 seconds left in the round, the referee is supposed to let the fighters know, hey, 
uh, fighters listen for the bell. There's 10 seconds left. If there's a lot of action, he's supposed to be at least two feet away from that action. Therefore, uh, whenever that bell rings, he can jump in the middle of that action and stop, you know, the fighters from hitting each other. Pretty much gives them a signal that, hey, the, the round's over, go to your corner. Um, within 10 seconds, Vic Draculich was a good five to six feet <laughs> away from the action. These guys were going at it. You know what I'm saying? Um, also, um, when the bell actually rang, Moises Flores was throwing a punch just like Rigo was. They were both in a heated exchange. It just so happened that Rigo's punch landed before Flores did. So I'm glad they didn't disqualify him because it was completely unintentional uh, that he knocked him out. Also, it was the referee's fault that the punch actually landed because he should have been in there stopping that action in the first place. Rigo's punch should have hit uh, Vic Draculich in the back of the head if, if everything went the way it was supposed to happen. You know what I'm saying? Um, also, last thing I'll pass it to y'all, Moses Floda is a big faking-ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? When you get you get knocked out by a punch, you don't you don't get hit, react, let your knees bend, put your ass on the canvas first, then put your back on the canvas, then stretch your legs out. Get the fuck out of here, nigga. When you get knocked out, you fall straight to the canvas. You don't fall to the canvas like you play fight with the kids. Nigga, get the fuck out of here, bro. Everybody saw that shit. And he flopped like LeBron right James. James. He yeah, flopped like LeBron James. He rose up like Undertaker. That's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Those are some excellent ass analysis. This is exactly what the fuck happened, man. He's just like fucking LeBron and came up like the Undertaker. Exactly. So just from that shit right there, I'm not interested in seeing no fucking Moises slow that fight. And to be honest with you, a lot of people talking about that Rigo is going to have to rematch him. I don't think Moses Flores will get in the ring with him again after that shit, man. He don't, he don't want to get his jaw collected. Oh, yeah. That was definitely on the verge of happening, man. Let me go ahead and go to the other fellas on this. Uh, uh, let me start off with uh, Bo, our Cuba the benefactor on the show. Uh, go ahead, man. Uh, what were your thoughts on what's happening as far as a no contest? And um, as far as what we may see for Rigo pretty much uh, moving forward, because he actually was stating some stuff in the news today about Lomachenko at the end of the day, saying he's willing to go as high as a catch weight of 127, 128, I mean, to fight him. So, I mean, uh, let me get your thoughts on that, man. For me? Yeah, man. Man, goofy ass nigga. Bob Aaron ain't going to make that fight. (laughs) Bob Bob Aaron is not going to make that fight. He's not going to make the fight. He's going to do what he always do is offer, make a bullshit offer, right? And then when Rico didn't say no, he's going to say, oh, see, 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 we made an offer. They did that same funky-ass shit to Jezreel Corrales, made this motherfucking offer of under 200 k and then when he was like, man, I'm a, I'm a champion. Fuck that. They was like, see, 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 he don't want to fight. Bob's not going to do that, man. He, he, he He's not going to make that fight, and he's just not going to do it, man. He's not. He's just not going to do it. And I know motherfuckers love to talk. This or what this and what's this. The last thing Bob Aram said was in November. As a matter of fact, he said something recently. He, he he made it very clear he's not making that fight. So I'm not even going. I'm I'm not even going to entertain that thought process. If motherfuckers got something to say to me, whatever, man. I know this motherfucker ain't making that fight. Oh. Nope. All right, and as far as uh, what do you think happens from Rigo now? Um, does he he match little Chucky or whatever is uh? No, man. You know what it is. You know what it is? They changed that fight to a no decision. That's bullshit, man. That's some bullshit. The shit should have stuck the way it stuck. The referee made the fucking call. They should have been like, all right, well, it's too late. The ref made the call. Leave it like that. No, they did that because Rigo is a fucking Cuban, and these motherfuckers hate that, and they hate these fucking Cubans. And that's why they changed that shit to a no decision. And I'm just fucking bullshit. No, that was the right that that was the right thing to do, man. It was people that never talk bullshit. Motherfuckers was sitting there like, oh, this motherfucker don't know shit. Yeah. No. Everybody was quiet. Everybody was like, motherfucker here. Yeah. Shit, I was about to jump in and ride with the bullshit. Shoot. <laughs> I was down for the fuck you. Yeah, right. That's the ride of that. That's my ride of that. Figure that. No, actually, that was a that, that was a decision that should have been made in the first place. But what happened was, like you said, the referee first was going to say it was an illegal punch. Then he looked at the replay, right, and he was like, okay, it's not an illegal punch. Then when he realized it wasn't an illegal punch, damn, I don't want to make a fucking decision. So he walks over to one ref, then he calls the motherfucker from, from up top down, and 
if everybody watching, remember somebody made the comment, you know, step away, step away from the mic, let's talk. Yeah, <laughs> I was, it was, I think it was right, Yeah, like step away from the mic, let's talk. <laughs> 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 Right, you just get was like watching the Three Stooges, real talk. So these motherfuckers huddle up, and then he stands there and he's patting his chest. He, uh, he's patting his chest like, okay, 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 I know what to do. I know what to do. Okay, I know what to do. Patting his, and he walks back up in there, and he's trying to explain this in a way that don't sound too fucked up, but saves my ass. And he says, so blah blah blah. And then they waited to ask him to say, oh well, we didn't listen to the audio. We didn't listen to the replay with the audio on. When the whole purpose of that was determined was to punch after the fucking bell. So that shit, that was some clown, that was some clown ass shit there. But that was the decision that should have been made in the first place. Now, as far as we go re-challenging him, um, the, the, I think the question is, does he want to re, does, does he want to re-challenge with Rigo? And I think that's the big, big, big question because I'm with 2K. He was that that nigga. Realize this is a different world. <laughs> then, you know, like 2K said, this motherfucker fell down and shit and then got, then, you know, rose back up. So I don't think he wants to fight Rigo. Going to 126, I know that they are, if you're talking about uh, money fights, the money fights at 126, the problem is none of those money fights are going to take a chance with Rigo at, at, at no 126 because some of them dudes at 126 didn't fight him at 122. So I still think yeah. he should go to 18. He should look for the winner of Yamanaka and uh, 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 Neary. That, because whoever wins that fight, that's going to be a bomb burner. But the problem is, if Yamanaka wins, they if Yamanaka squeaks out a close victory, they're not going to chance him in another tough fight like that, especially when they can make a super fight with Inoue. But if Neary wins, I could see Neary wanting to fight. I could see, I could definitely see Neary being willing to fight Rigo and uh, Zolani Tete. So that, I just think there are more possible fights for him at the lower weight division than it is for him to go to 126. So I agree. But we don't gotta we don't gotta do something, man, because you know he's about two years away from being a 30 to 30 move. All right, um, I'm gonna let the other guys chime in. Uh, Bernard, uh, man, what was your take on it as far as uh, what we saw? Do you think uh, Moises Flores goes back in there because this team seems adamant that they're gonna go in there and continue with that same game plan, even though, you know, we saw round one how ineffective that shit was because of his lack of hand speed. Um, you know, they're planning to go 80 punches a round output, you know, the BOK landing 10, 15 shots around. Uh, well, to, if they could land 10 shots at that, because I didn't see him land nothing <laughs> out, of, out, of, out of what he threw in round one. But they were pretty much adamant about sticking with that game plan, uh, throwing 80 punches around and letting Rigo do the defensive thing and laying, a, you know, a couple punches around, you know, thinking they had a good chance of winning off of that. But after, you know, him going down uh, the way he did, um, do you think he they chance it or, you know, anytime soon? And then, you know, you got to think about Rigo's, uh, you know, another thing I was going to ask Bo. Um, Rigo's promotional situation because we're hearing that the Rock Nation may actually default or uh, defunct, go and uh, be going out of business actually with post uh, this ward card uh, over the weekend. So, I mean, that's another thing to think about is this promotional situation moving forward. Um, and will he be able to fight immediately? So, let me get your take on that, Bernard. Um, it, I would say, <laughs> boys get back in the ring with him. No unless the WBA ordered it. That's the only way I can see that happening. I digress on that part. As for his promotional issues, uh, I thought it was just Rock Nation being the, the, um, the, being the puck only in boxing. So that won't be just his contract with the other, other, other fighters on the Rock Nation. Um, if I was Rigo, I would actually, if I was him, go on and sign with Al Heyman. That's the best, your best chance, and if he could, try to get on the undercard of Mayweather and McGregor. I know that's not kind of crazy, but all eyes could be on him, and I think it would be beneficial for him if he could put that rematch on that undercard. That's a lot um, of people that would see him fight <clears throat> if he gets on the – I mean, it does sound crazy, but it's a, it, it would be a good shot 
because a lot of people would see him fight on on the undercard of that mega event. I hate. I just almost threw up in my own mouth by saying mega event. But I mean, yeah, it's, it's I, true. I, yeah, I did. yeah. I'm I mean, surprised we even mentioned that shit. I, I'm trying not to even mention that damn. I mean, let, let me say this. Let me say this. I wasn't trying to mention to give it any shine. I don't care about that that that, that match. I'm caring about yeah. Rigo it's trying to get him exposed. I mean, Mayweather has that respect for Rigo and his skill set. It would be smart for him to sign with Al Heyman and say, yo, hey, and Al talk to Floyd and say, hey, yo, throw him on the undercard. Why not? That is what oh, I'm yeah. Do you think I'm that would be the best situation for him promotionally? Yeah, uh, let me get a, get the rest of the panel. Um, the, the, that was actually a good point brought up in the Bobby Nard. Um, do you think that's the best move for him promotionally now is to sign with Heyman or – um, I was thinking even possibly a UK move with Eddie Hearn or uh, Frank Warren because Frank Warren has a lot of Tay Tay, and uh, you know that he could definitely make some big fights over there with McConnell and Zizi at 118. You know, possibly um, even if he you know goes over go that route. Um, so let me get you guys a thought: Is that um, is Heyman the best route for him promotionally right now? If Rock Nation really is going out of business in, in, in boxing. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Um, Big cool. Big cool. Go ahead and get you in on this. I think so, man. I mean, like I said, both guys, Hammond can get both, you know, Rigo and whoever that's dodging them, you know, a good amount, you know, a good paycheck to agree. Really down to, you eventually got to fight them, man. You can't stay in the division and cross the division and keep ducking and dodging. I mean, product. is that the middle? Is that the middle ground? Al Hammond basically being the guy that's saying, yeah, you, know, you guys got to fight him. I mean, as far as Santa Cruz and France, you know, the guys that helped yeah. them in yeah. 22. I think so. I mean, you got to. I, so. I mean, you got to. I mean, if he goes with Heyman, he guarantees to face at least one or two of those guys. And Rigo needs them like they need Rigo for different reasons. You know, if you defeat a, a, a Rigo, you a Cruz or a Mares, they take you to another level, you know, because Rigo yeah. is a superstar, you know, talent. Not a superstar fighter, but a superstar talent. And if Rigo beats those guys who – Draw you know big money and big crowds. That's gonna elevate him, you know, because they're gonna appreciate the greatness in which he takes apart these guys, which he will do if they step in the ring. So it's all about you know what he wants to do. And like both said, he's two years away from you know being a thirty for thirty. Not that it's all his fault, but you know we gotta put the blame everywhere. You know, it's Rigo and his deep fighters not being you know brave enough to step in the ring against true elite fighters to test their skills. So. Hopefully he makes the smart decision and gets the big play that he deserves. We just gotta wait and see. I agree. All right. Definitely, uh, man. I'm glad we got that out there, man. A lot of good info put out there about this situation. Wait, wait. Um, go ahead, Bo. He should he should not sign with Eddie Hearn because we've seen what Eddie Hearn do with Cubans. He did absolutely fucking nothing with Louis Ortiz. Uh, True. The person yeah. he should say. I think he should... that that was different with. Uh, with Ortiz is because he had Anthony Joshua as well. Well, but Eddie Hearns I mean, also has Quig, Frampton, and Shelby. He can make a trilogy with them alone. So I don't understand. So he wouldn't risk that that kind of money. Who Rigo should really sign for from a stand business standpoint, from a standpoint of being able to promote you, and from a standpoint of this is a, a person that pretty much, as we've seen, can do certain things and get the fuck away with it. Rigo should sign with Golden Boy. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, he says, hey, wait a minute, hear, hear me out. He signs no, 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 explain it, explain it. Okay, I'm explaining. He signs to Al Heyman. Al Heyman is already fucking hated, not like. So we go signs with him, and that's even more going to ramp up people probably saying negative shit about him. The thing with Austin that's Golden fine. Boy is, yeah. but, but see, the, the thing with Austin and Golden Boy is, they know how to promote their fighters. People will be exceptionally friendly, exceptionally friendly to their motherfucking fighters, and Austin will keep him busy. At the very least, I don't think so. The thing but, but I disagree. I disagree. But, 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 but you need to fight these guys. I mean, keeping them busy doesn't equal a great career to him. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty oh, sure Rigo but, wants to. If, he, if, you, if you keep him busy in the fight, he moves up through the rankings. Eventually, they're going to have to fight him because they're, he's going to become Mando. I, 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 I mean, mean but we I had the situation at 122 as well, you know, the I, where he but, was. I just don't think going with Al Heyman, Unless, unless it's, it's a for certain that Al Heyman say, "Hey man, listen, I'm going to get you these fights." Fine, because remember, Austin was negotiating the fight with Leo Santa Cruz to fight Rigo when Santa Cruz had aimed Heyman's no. contract out. No, 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 no. Austin De La Hoya wasn't gonna make that fight. 
Leo Santa Cruz priced himself out, said he wanted $3 million. Purposely. That he did it purposely. That, yeah, that fight was not going to no, happen. No, yeah, he did, wait a minute, he did that, but he also, he also had his contract bought out from Oscar, too, because he knew he right, didn't want to fight. Still, but he still wasn't going to make it. He, Oscar wasn't making that fight. And the, and the main reason why I disagree is because Oscar can barely handle Roman Gonzalez. He's not going to be able to handle Guillermo Rigondeaux either. You know what I'm saying? Roman Gonzalez is actually a fighter that people like, and he still can't handle him properly. So what you think what he would do with Rigo, a motherfucker that nobody likes? And exactly. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I see what y'all are saying. It's just that the only way I could see Heyman is if Heyman was to say, listen, I'm going to get you – uh, Leo Santa Cruz. I'm going to get you Scott Quick. I'm going. That's the only way. Otherwise, he could but, wind up just, just in the same fucking position he is with Rock Nation. Nah, I just but, but look, I but you gotta, but, but look, but look, oh, though, my, 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 look, even though he gives himself the best chance and position to get those fights, and if he don't yeah. get the fights, he's still going to get paid better than what he's getting paid now. So he's Yeah, because I think he made like position. 125K for this fight. Uh, yeah, yeah, but didn't he have some kind of um, so many fight guarantee with uh, Rock Nation? Well, well, yeah, I mean, well, Rock Nation been fucking up anyway, so yeah, they can't. Yeah, yeah. 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 See, what's the name? Shakur Stevenson with top rank right now. Um, yeah. so and they're going to ESPN, uh, too, though. They're going to ESPN. Right, I'm about to say, uh, Bob was on ESPN just saying, just saying, just... Yeah, I'm just, like, jumping down on every goddamn yeah. thing, don't you? Um, but <laughs> go ahead, man. <laughs> uh, that's actually a topic we were going to get into a little bit later, but go ahead, y'all. Uh, no, nah, I'm just saying he's um, I mean, he's about to run in the top run. He's going to be on his for the next two years. So, what's your AC fight? So, I mean, it's more reward if he can do it. But, it's All right. Uh, so, let's go into hey, our hey, other. Hey, hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me make this announcement. <laughs> Chris Henderson just said Bo is a crazy ass motherfucker because he said Golden Boy. <laughs> 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 Hey, oh, hey, tell Chris, hey, tell Chris, that shit just fall out of my mouth easy, either, that shit. He's on the phone. <laughs> he can hear you. Oh, okay. He, yeah, hey, Chris, that shit didn't come out of my mouth easy, bro. It did. <laughs> uh, we going to get into our, our that's a big mega fight, man, from the weekend. We had the rematch between Andre S.O.G. Ward taking on Sergey. Uh, I, yeah, we can't call him by his nickname anymore. Sergey Kovalev. Chris. Crush, crush dice. We gonna call him Crush Dice. Crush Dice. <laughs> crush you know dice. what I'm saying? <laughs> Sergey Crush Dice. Kovalev. Oh, man, yeah, Ward man. knocked him out. Uh, eighth round uh, knockout, I believe. Correct. Um, yeah, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, Definitely unexpected, but you know they said uh, Ward. Uh, Virgil uh, Hunter said he trained him for the knockout, and you know Kovalev laughed at that shit at the final press conference and. What do you know? It resulted in the knockout. Um, man, let me get 2K started as far as what we stylistically breaking this down, what we saw differently in this fight, man. Man, one of the I'm going to start with the, the negative of Kovalev. First thing that I noticed from Kovalev is that his jab wasn't as commanding um, as it was in the first fight. In the first fight, man, his jab was money. 100%, not even 100, I don't want to be ridiculous with it, but over 50% of the time, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he, wherever he wanted to place his jab, Andre Ward's head just seemed to be right in the middle of that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, also, he was stopping Andre Ward's dip. He was timing the shit out of his dip, and I made that clear in my prediction video. A lot of people were like, oh, he's, he's timing Ward's jab. No, but it was is he's timing Ward's movement. Uh, Ward would, you know, he does that dip right, and then he'll come up over the top. He would time him. That's actually how he knocked him down. He dipped right, came up over the top, and then uh, uh, Kovalev came with a straight right hand. But even outside the knockdown, whenever Ward would try to dip to get on the inside, Kovalev had that jab sitting right there, and he would run right into the jab. He would also throw that, that chopping overhand right, you know, that would hit Ward on the side of the head and the eardrum and the temple and shit. And that would also stop his offensive attack of trying to get on the inside. I mean, he 
This dude, man, he 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 was he was his timing was impeccable in the first fight. In the second fight, his timing was terrible, and I think it wasn't him per se because he was the same Kovalev. It was more Andre Ward because Andre Ward had got his legs back, whereas in the first fight, his legs were not as good. So he and then I think he had like the two. Uh, he had to get his knees drained or something like that. You know what I'm saying in the beginning or in the training camp before that fight. So. That's what stagnated his movement. Didn't do any running. Didn't do any conditioning type workouts that would that would uh, help his leg movement. So going into that fight, he had stiff legs. This fight, he was 100%. Legs were great. Head movement was great. So Kovalev missed a lot of shots. So that was the first thing I noticed from him. Um, another thing is you got to try out the long coach. Buy after mine. Tired. Buy after mine. He's gonna need to try right. after mine for the for the for the trilogy if they have it. He gonna need to try my after mine for that excuse. <laughs> <laughs> the biathlon, my bad. <laughs> you got that, coach. But the motherfucker was tired by the round, by the third round. Now again, and may not be Kovalev's fault. You know what I'm saying? Because Andre Ward was so great at fighting on the inside in this fight, bro. This is one thing that a lot of people don't see. Now, I won't mention his name. You know what I'm saying? I know one of y'all motherfuckers will after I say this, because I know y'all gonna know who I'm talking about. Dude put up in this group, you know what I'm saying, uh, anybody that had Andre Ward winning the fight, you know, really are just biased, don't know what they're watching. He said, yeah, it's worth a little bit. Hold on, wait a minute. Kajaron. 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 Jerry Kajaron. Jerry Kajaron. So he uh, so he had he had him up five rounds to two. He said Kovalev was totally dominating this fight. You know, I said before and I'll say again, uh, you know, being able to see what goes on in that ring is a special skill. You can love boxing. Boxing could be your your favorite sport ever since you were two years old. You never missed a fight. But if you never learn, the, one, the first thing is guys that actually get in the ring, they have a bit of a, of a of more of a um, advantage because they were taught certain things. And then when they sit down and watch a fight, they basically watch the fight based on the things that they've taught, they were taught or the things that they, you know, had experienced. But then others who haven't actually been in the ring and just love boxing, they come to learn with more people that they talk to, you know, what they need to be looking for whenever they watch a fight. And some people just don't get either of those luxuries, you know what I'm saying, no matter how, how long they've been around the sport. What you don't see if you, if you don't have that special skill is the body work that Andre Ward did to Kovalev in those clinches. I mean, every time they clinched, it could have been Kovalev initiating the clinch. It could have been Andre Ward initiating the clinch. He made sure he got off about three body shots on Kovalev before that clinch was over. Also, Andre Ward was bullying the shit out of Sergey Kovalev, and he was pushing him back. Kovalev was pushing him back too, but he was using a lot more of his strength, or I'm sorry, a lot more of his stamina because he was getting hit to the body as this shit was happening. You know what I'm saying? So it was almost, if you look at it, and this is early in the fight, this is like round three, you see uh, Kovalev kind of lumbering forward in the clinch because he's so fucking tired already. You know what I'm saying? I had Andre Ward winning this fight five rounds of two primarily because of the body attack. Now, I understand people who don't understand what's going on in the clinch, it's easy to say Kovalev won because he pretty much had the better of the exchanges on the outside. Watching the fight from the outside is extremely easy. You got two fighters at a distance. You know, you can see all the punches coming. You can see the punches hitting the motherfucker. It's easy to watch a fight from the outside, but it takes a special skill to watch it from the inside. And if you don't have that skill, I can see why you thought Kovalev was winning that fight. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it was a masterful, masterful performance by Andre Ward, uh, primarily the inside fight and the body attack. Um, He... uh, I don't think any of his shots were low blows, and that's simply because of where the positioning of Kovalev's trunks, they were over his belly button. And I'm glad uh, Roy Jones was the voice of reason. Of course, I don't watch HBO. I don't fuck with HBO. I watch the Sky Sports broadcast, and Pauli Malignaggi was sounding like Jim Lampley for a little bit on that motherfucker. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I'm glad Roy Jones was the voice of reason because he said, dude, None of those shots were low because Kovalev's trunks were above his belly button or over his belly button, and that's what I was saying while I was watching the fucking fight. You know what I'm saying? So there were good, hard, 
crisp shot that hit him directly in the gut. You know what I'm saying? And, I mean, it was a beautiful knockout. It was a beautiful knockout. Big ups to Andre Ward. I still think Sergey Kovalev is a problem at, uh, at, uh, at 175. One of my subscribers to my channel, he asked me, he said, hey, man, do you think the blueprint is out on Kovalev? And my, my other subscriber answered the question before I could, so I'll give him the credit. He said yes and no because the, the blueprint is there, but it takes a special skilled fighter like Andre Ward. To exactly. And yeah. there, aren't any, there aren't any other fighters like an Andre Ward at 175. So Sergey Kovalev is still a fucking problem for anybody in the division. I actually want to see him against the Adonis Stevenson, the Gavazics, the Peter Biev the Sullivan Beretta's. I want to see him fight those guys. I don't think he should – I don't think he's done not one bit. It's just Andre Ward is just a great fighter. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely nothing wrong with losing to another great. You got to remember these were two of the top five pound-for-pound pound fighters in the game. So, I mean, taking an L, especially a loss to a special fighter like Ward, you know, um, it's a generational thing. You don't see too many fighters like this every generation. Um, Ward is one of them. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, for Kovalev to take else to this guy twice, there's nothing wrong in that, man. Um, let me go ahead and get everybody else to, to chime in as far as what they saw in this fight. And uh, I guess maybe what they think moving forward for Ward as well. Let's get some of the thoughts on that. Um, let me go ahead and go go to Big Cool. Man, 2K pretty much summed up a lot of it. But um, also, Ward didn't really respect his power as much in the first fight as he did in this one. Um, I mean, he didn't respect it uh, as much as he did in the first fight as this one. You know, he really didn't – he did move, but he wasn't moving to, you know, kind of avoid the shots. He was setting up his shots. He was staying off the jab. His jab was on point as well, you know what I'm saying? And, and the right hand was the, the big uh, punch for him up top when he would, you know, go for the head. And a lot of things, another, you know, people, you know, overlook was the uppercuts he was throwing as well as the body shots when they were on the inside. He was just throwing as many uppercuts as he was body shots when Kovalev had him pushed up on the ropes. You know what I'm saying? His, you know, ability to fight off the ropes in close quarters is, is great. You know what I'm saying? And every time he would hit Kovalev, Kovalev would just, you know, the fight would be taken out of him. Because he hit him, I think, in a seven, six or seven round with a body shot, and Kovalev turned his back. And that right there told me that Kovalev wasn't, you know, he wasn't really about continuing on in that fight. He was looking for any any way out possible. He was complaining about every body shot or borderline low blow that Ward would connect on him, trying to plead with Tony Weeks to, hey, you know, got to penalize this guy, got to disqualify him because he whooped my ass, but I'm not trying to go out like no sucker and, you know, blatantly quit, so I need your help. But Tony Weeks, he seen through that, and, you know what I'm saying, the body, the body assault was just even more brutal this fight than it was the first fight. And Ward stood and traded with him you know, at times in a fight which you don't advise going against Kovalev. But he did do what uh, John David Jackson said at times, and don't run and don't move, stand and trade with him. And when he did, he did, you know, get the best of that. I mean, he, I just think that he was a better fighter. He was a well-conditioned fighter, better mentally and physically. And like I said, he was back. He was healthy. His movement was nice. His jab was on point. His right hand was on point. And the uppercut is an overlooked punch that, did a lot of uh, damage uh, to Kovalev, and I don't think Kovalev, uh, you know, was expecting to get hit, you know, with the uppercut on the inside. I thought he was just strictly prepared for the body work, and he couldn't even defend that. So, I mean, you know, Kovalev talked all that shit and, and fell short, man, and he knew he knew uh, that, that stopping was legit because he wasn't really mad and, and, you know, all that. You know, when the foreign fighters feel like they got robbed, but they got the American promoter, they kind of tend yep. to he fought the lead of, you know, said of their promoter or trainer. He like his bullshit, but he didn't understand with conviction, man. He knew that. Then they got pictures of him, you know, buying Rolexes and shit, you know, on boxing dot com. So he didn't give a fuck, man. He got fucked up in the fight, and um, Kathy Dude was fucking him outside the ring. So he's not that yeah, smart. Yeah, we, 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 we gonna get we gonna get in we gonna get into some of that as well. Be cool. Um, I'm gonna let you wrap up, and we are gonna go into to, to the other two cats, and I'm gonna let them get. Get some of their perspective of some of the other stuff. Uh, go ahead, Big Cool. No, but just a brilliant performance um, on Ward's part. And I think it's, it's time to start mentioning him as an all-time great. You know what I'm saying? His resume speaks for itself. And like, like me and 2K was talking about on, uh, a couple weeks ago with his aspirations of cruiserweight and heavyweight, he mentioned it in the post fight 
he don't need to fight Joshua. Hurt Hunter need to you know kill that noise. But Joseph Parker, if he decide to skip cruiserweight, that's the guy I would fight. But I think Andre Ward is an all time great, especially after this week uh, weekend win over Cobra. Yeah, huh. um, fellas, I'm, I'm gonna ask uh, get, get into this one, man, because we had a lot of uh, a lot of controversy as far as uh, people saying the stop about the stoppage itself from Tony Weeks, man. So let me get. Get everybody's take on that, man. As far as the stoppage, um, Bo, were you in agreement to, in agreement with the stoppage? Because we're having a lot of people saying this bad. Kovalev complained about it initially after the match, saying he it shouldn't have been stopped. But you know, we got to think about the position of Kovalev. He was sitting on the ropes, covering his stomach, like you know he uh, had diarrhea um, on the campgrounds. Um, so uh, let me get you, to get your takes on on the stoppage, man, because that's something that a lot of people seem to be uh, having a lot of issue with over the weekend. Uh, but let me get your take on that part. Um, you know what? Here's the thing, man, and it's crazy. When HBO, Lampley, Kellerman, and Roy Jones, when they all said that they felt Andre Ward lost the fight, oh, motherfuckers ran with that like crazy. Now those same people are saying those punches was not low and they would, didn't have a problem with the ref stopping the fight. Now all of a sudden they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Uh-huh. The, reality is, the reality is anybody who feels that it was stopped too early only feel that way because they either A, wanted a definitive, a definitive victory so there could be no type of controversy for Andre Ward to win or – they motherfuckers that don't like Andre Ward and felt that maybe at some point Kovalev would have probably came back or deducted Andre Ward a point or whatever. But the bottom line is this. If you know boxing, if you've been in boxing, we talked about this. I'm going to take everybody back. Tony Harrison fought Jared Hurd. And me and 2K explained this. When, when Harrison got off the canvas, and after the eight count was administered, spit his mouthpiece out, he just told that ref, I don't want to fucking fight no more. That's why the ref called that fight. Same thing here. When Kovalev is sitting on the ropes, now the only thing holding him up are the fucking ropes. That's it. That's the only thing holding him up because he has completely went into a position where his own legs are not holding him up no more. And he's in a position where he looks and appears to be defenseless and offering no resistance. The only thing left that you give the ref to think is that you're fucking done. It wasn't, like, this wasn't the Vladimir Klitschko-Anthony Joshua situation where Joshua was overwhelming Klitschko, but none of the punches was landed and the ref jumped in. No, this motherfucker was leaning actually on the ropes in a defensive position, offering nothing back. So... The, the ref was left thinking, okay, you must be done. I'm going to stop the fight. Because the ref's number one job is what? To protect the fighter. And for anybody who wants to tell me, though, Andre Ward's a dirty fighter, okay, let me give you some examples. You say that Andre Ward hit him low. One time, Coppola felt Andre Ward hit him low. He bent over. Well, Andre Ward stepped back and the ref said, no, it wasn't a low punch. Keep on fighting. A la Salido and Lomachenko, for those of you who want to say that shit was fucked up, right? So that wasn't that situation, was it? No, okay? Then there was a time when Kovalev had his back to Andre Ward when he missed the punch. And Andre Ward didn't jump on him to hit him when he wasn't looking, right? A la Floyd Mayweather and Arturo Gatti. He waited to Kovalev turn around, the ref told him to go. And even at the last one when he was knocking him out, he was leaning on him, and he stopped and looked at the ref like, you want me to keep hitting him? A dirty fighter don't stop. I allow Mike Tyson and anybody he's ever had up against the fucking ropes. You had to, you had to physically grab Mike and toss him to the side. He was going to keep beating the shit out of you. So a dirty fighter don't stop himself to make sure, hey, it's okay for me to keep going. He's just going to keep fucking going. So y'all Imagine need to burn the some hair blows, Some hair blows in there, there, too. That's what people are feeling to mention. Like, he could have really did some damage to Kovalev in that position. And, and, and that's my thing is people need to learn the difference between Dirty fighting and inside fighting. Inside fighting is rough. Inside fighting is fucking grimy. That's why it's called inside fighting. It ain't pretty, but it's called inside fucking fighting. But when a fighter shows you he is in a position where he looks defenseless, well, you have to make the call. But at some point, too, we got to put some responsibility on the fighter because Kobe has to all it is by doing one thing, take 
taking a goddamn knee. If he'd have taken a fucking knee, right, then the ref would have administered an eight count. Then you could have did your complaints about it being low, and the ref could have told you no. If the ref even said it one time, he thought he had a motion. No, your cup is too high. That's the legal point. Your cup's too high, which is it was, a, yep. it, it was above the fucking navel. So bottom line is we knew this was going to happen. They, those who, who wanted to can, like, you know, uh, oh, oh, we're not going to have no excuse. Like, it's funny because the first fight was deemed uh, whoever wins is going to be number one pound for pound, and motherfuckers didn't want to do that. Now this fight is deemed no excuses, and guess what we get? So far as I'm concerned, they, right, they should have just, they, they, they just told this, I don't want to fucking see you no more because that's what it is. I don't yeah. want Andre Ward to fucking see this Cobra Love no more. And if Cobra Love is going to, uh, uh, if he has any chance of remotely probably getting, getting, in, getting back with Andre Ward or whatever the case may be or get with somebody, he's going to first have to admit, okay, I fucking lost. You got to stop blaming every other, other people, and people got to stop accepting the shit you say. You should have took a fuck. Every other fighter knows this to take a knee. Now, he didn't, he probably, it's hard for him to register that because it never happened to him before, so he didn't know what to do, but that's no excuse, though. You should have took a fucking knee, dog. They, that's the number one thing you're, you're taught. You take a fucking knee. He didn't want yeah, to take the knee. Yeah, he was already been told he might as well have failed. Hey, he didn't want to take the knee, you know, and that's what happened, but, you know, I mean, it is what it is. I'm not shocked. We're not shocked, but y'all need to stop going against the movement, and that's all I'm going to say. Hey, he was the Flores fight, man. That shit, that motherfucker got the, got the damn pack to how to fucking uh, sell, sell a, a fucking knockdown, knockout. Man, if you watch that fight, you would have been in good position to just flop and then get back up. Yeah, and you also see, um, you know, it's a thing like you said. He could have took the D. Um, he he put him in the self, put himself in a bad situation, man. Um, not learning how to fight on the inside, and I mean, we're gonna get into that now, actually. Um, the aftermath of the fight, man. We seen a whole lot with the coming out as far as the purses, Kathy Duva showing her ass in the post press conference. Um, you know, John David Jackson not necessarily throwing Kovalev under the bus, but pretty much going there, you know, in the post fight, you know, in some of the interviews we've seen. Um, but not necessarily going all the way there, saying he's gonna get deeper into it later, you know, possible turmoil within the team. Um, so let me get you guys' take on some of the stuff we've seen in the aftermath. First off, uh, let me get you guys' take on, you know, the, the whole purse setup with uh, Kovalev. I mean, that's a damn shame what we're hearing as far as uh, Kovalev getting paid on, on based of pay-per-view sales and tickets. Um, you know what I'm saying? Ward's getting got a, what, a six and a half million purse guaranteed, and Kovalev's getting based on an un- under-promoted fight. That only did 150k pay per views or what 100k in the first one. 150k. Um, 150k in the first yeah. one. I mean, yeah. What? What? Come on, the first fight. The first yeah, fight yeah, was yeah. 150k thousand views. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, yeah, 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 like 163, I think 163,000 or something like that. All right, so let me get your take on that whole situation, man. What what, what do we see from Kovalev um, in this situation with uh, main events? Because that, I mean, it's a travesty for him pretty much to get paid peanuts for a pound-for-pound, top-pound-for-pound showdown. Um, so go ahead, Bernard. Let me get your take on that and everything we've seen in the aftermath, from, you know, from Kathy Duva, you know, showing her ass and whatnot. Uh, you, if you want to say the aftermath, it, it started. What day was that? Um, Thursday, that press conference, the, the Thursday before the, uh, the day of the win, it started at that uh, uh, last press conference before the fight. And Ward and Virgil Hunter have been telling us that wait until the press conference when the truth came, the truth is going to come out. Well, when before the press conference started, the, you saw the uh, pay-per-view uh, the purses for the, uh, the fighters. And when you saw that Kovalev wasn't making no money, boom. That was the beginning of the end right there for that whole team because now it's like, okay, what's going on? Then you got to the press conference. You got where Jay Prince uh, said, hey, Kovalev clearly admitted that he was gassed out in the fifth round, and it was on uh, Radio Raheem show. Then go, it started going and going. Like Kovalev, mad, walked off. So did John David Jackson. I just said they had a plan, but bullshit. Kovalev was pissed off because the truth came out. 
and that was just the leader of the downfall. The mind, it, well, I won't even necessarily say it was mind games from Ward, but you could call it that. But at the same time, it exposed how Kathy Duva is. Now let's fast forward to the um, post fight press conference, where Kathy Duva clearly, if anybody uses this term, when a, when a Caucasian person uses this term, you people, you know she's a really. It's like pretty much calling black folks niggas. So I guess the war fans or whoever were taunting her and she got offended or whatever. So she was saying all this kind of stuff going on and everything, trying to say, hey, I'm going to the, NA, the NSAC about these low, the report the low blows because my fighter was low blow, this and that, da 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 boom. Long story short, it just came out the NSAC, clearly said the, the, the punches were legal. They were on the belt line. So her petition is null and void. As the mm-hmm. going for the, their um, that side with Kovalev, Kovalev pretty much needs to sit down and rethink everything. I'm gonna piggyback on what Bo said. First thing he needs to do, he needs to admit that he lost to Andre Ward. Plain and simple, he lost to the better man. And there's nothing wrong with saying hey, you lost. Also, a better man, he got you that night. The next thing you need to do is either get rid of John David Jackson. Clearly, there's no, there's no trust there. You only use him there to hold the mix. That's all he's there for. He was ready to leave. You don't, you don't even treat him with respect. Get you a Russian trainer, whoever that you could feel close to. Get, get with Lamachenko's father, or wh- whoever you possibly could that could make you feel that hey get you back on track. The third thing you need to do is finish your contractual obligations with Kathy Duva. Once he does, the reason why I can yeah, he could lead Kathy Duva, but he could probably be in court and dealing with all this nonsense and stuff, but fulfill his fight, get a couple, even if you have to take on some lower, lower tier competitors, knock them out, finish your contract and be done with her and go sign with somebody that's going to make sure you get paid for being a pound-for-pound pound guy in boxing. Definitely agreed there, Bernard. Um, but I'm going to go into something else, man. Um, Bo put out an article um, the other day that was put, I think, in Ring Magazine about Andre Ward still um, pretty much with not being liked, you know what I'm saying, even in the back. Oh, that was me. <laughs> that was me. I was saying that. Okay, okay. I thought it was Bo that had uh, posted it in uh, in uh, some groups as well. But, um, okay. No, but, um, no, I posted it first, and but he didn't put it in one of the groups I was in, so I just reposted it. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me get you guys' thoughts on this, man, because it seems like Ward's still getting pretty highly disrespected in the aftermath of him. You know, we said it was going to be an even more convincing victory in this one prior to the shit happening. So like we say, stop going against the movement. You know what I'm saying? We know what we're doing here. Um, man, uh, but continuing on from that, it seems like he's still not getting respect from people post, you know, post uh, aftermath of this fight, and you know they're still expecting a whole lot more from him. Um, what's it gonna take from him? Uh, what do you guys think we see from Ward if this is the end of uh, his uh, HBO situation and uh, Rock Nation potentially? Um, you know, is, he mentioned some things as far as cruiserweight and even heavyweight. You know, with uh, Virgil Hunter saying Anthony Joshua in the post uh, fight press conference. Um, so who wants to tackle this one? I, you know, whoever want to tackle it, jump on it, man. Oh, uh, which one uh, you going for? Which I one you going for? You talking about the cruiserweight? Just, just, yeah, I, 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 or, Andre, or the hate. just everything. I mean, I just okay. touched on as far as him not getting respected still post this fight and, you know, his expectations of cruiserweight and heavyweight possibly. I'm going to uh, tackle the hate real quick. I'm going to piggyback what 2K said on his show. He's not white. Yeah. Plain and simple. He's not white. That's all it is. And it's sad He's part. not white enough. Sure, well, yeah, you know what I'm saying? No, but see, he has a white father, and people yeah. don't even point him out, but he got black features. So long. Yeah, but. He, 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 he white white enough. Hold on. He don't, oh, he don't have that 2K light skin. Right. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> he need that 2K that that okay. light skin. He'll be all right. No, but let me say this real quick on that. But <laughs> other than that, but. That nigga's they don't like. 
That nigga's way lighter than me. I'm I'm way darker than Andre Ward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. Shut up, man. Walk, walk, walk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go ahead, Bernard. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, let me get back on it. All I'm basically saying is I don't want to say race, but his style of fighting his he's very versatile. He can go on he can go south or he can fight outside, he can fight inside. And he's beating the fighters that the casual fans like. You know yeah, that's he, he 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 knocked out a bully, you know what I'm saying? The guy fake yeah. bully. Fake bully. Yeah, a cry, a cry baby now. I mean, uh, so I mean, what is it that it's going to take for him to get that respect, man? Because I mean, it feels Don't. like he has to go ten times and beyond. Well, Who am I from, like, I know from a Loma Chico, from, from let's say a Loma Chico right now, he's getting all the accolades with only less than ten fights. Let's say, but we got Ward with thirty three and zero, undefeated since. Motherfucking what, twelve years old, yeah. and still no respect, you know, compared to Loma Chico here on his own American soil. I it's mean, okay, man. Okay, you know what? He ain't his white race, man. We you know what? Card, but he ain't white. You know Check it out. Like Check it out. Let's keep it real. Let's 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 keep it fucking real. First thing I want to say is, people forget Andre Ward put a tweet out that told Kovalev, "You better check them numbers." That was a long time ago when he put that shit out. You better check them numbers they got you again. That's when Kovalev should have figured something was up with his contract. And even though I don't like Kovalev, but every man has a right to feed his fucking family and get paid for the job that he's done. I that agree. Dude, that did him dirty. Well, not Duba, but whatever. It was, he was done dirty. It was her. It was okay, her. Yeah, he was done dirty. He was done dirty and he was done fucked up. But let's keep it real. But Nard said something a while back about how motherfuckers don't like slick boxers. And that's just what it is. Today's boxing is about knocking motherfuckers out. It's about a thousand goddamn punches. It's about uh, every round being, you know, exciting and amped up. They don't want that's fighting. Not, that's not, that's not on. what it is because the cell phone is not what it is. No, 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 let me finish. No. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Right, yeah. wait a minute. Don't let me finish. Sh- let don't me finish. Don't so I'm not. Let, let me finish. Let me. Will you motherfuckers let me goddamn fucking finish? Hurry up. Go ahead. 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 All the time, this is all I've ever heard people say is what? We don't want no one. It's not that we don't like Floyd's style. We just don't want no one to act like Floyd. Okay, fine. Here comes, in comes Andre Ward, who does act nothing like fucking Floyd. In comes a dude who is, who, who, who is a fucking devout Christian at that, okay? Yep. Married high school sweetheart, mom and dad. He has a better story than Lomo, Gennady, and fucking Cobra Love. When you talk about what he had to go through to get to where he is, mom and dad both had drug and alcohol affliction. Married his high school sweetheart that he got pregnant, by the way, stayed with her, stayed on the grind, and made it to where he is today. Won a gold medal for this fucking country. Okay? So it, 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 it is about his, his, his fucking color, but it's also about the fact that, guess what? He's not, a, he, he's not the type of fighter that we want presenting and representing fucking boxing because they they don't want to make him number one pound for pound so bad, so fucking bad, that even after he won the first fight, they still had the nerve to have fucking Cobalt up ahead of him. So when you, when you sit and you try to say, well, it's not about color, I will even take it back to when Terrence Crawford beat Victor Postal. And the way that Terrence Crawford fought, they was like, oh, man, what the fuck? Fuck this shit. We don't like this fight. So mm-hmm. motherfuckers is motherfuckers is always going to, regardless of how y'all feel, y'all can say we fucked up. Motherfuckers don't like bringing race into the conversation, which is fine. You don't like it. But let's not pretend like that shit is not there because when I sit and I say, okay, you guys like knockouts, right? Right. How come y'all like Deontay Wilder? Then, exactly. Oh, uh, look, look, look at the way he fight. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You never talked to me about fucking skill. 
still never came up, dog. Yeah. 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 Get the same knockout that fucking uh, Gennady Golovkin did. Exactly. Okay? So, so you, you can't tell me still because you weren't talking still. When I sat and I broke down and I said if I sit and I break down Gary Russell, uh, Jason Sosa, and Nicholas Walters, and I compare those three opponents to Yuriakis Gamboa, Felix Diaz, and Victor Postal for Terrence Crawford. How can you tell me that these motherfuckers are better than them? Or better yet, I don't even do you one better. I'll take Neil Anoye, who be two linear champions making multiple title defenses. How can you say that what Lomachenko did was better than this dude? Okay? Yeah. So, you, yeah, you, you're fucking right. It is about color. Whether y'all want to hear this or not, we know it's about color. The problem is getting y'all to see that that's what that shit is about. That's the fucking hey. problem. Because hey, when you look like... across the pond, Anthony Joshua, he ain't got that fucking problem. He can beat, he can beat the shit out of Vladimir Pisto and be celebrated in love. So don't you fucking tell right. me it's not about color. Exactly. And that's the, difference, that's the difference between U.K. fans and American fans. And, you know, America is the fucking is the land of where racism is, is prominent at. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, it's about color. Look at where we fucking live. And you can, just like Bo just said, you can compare how the U.K. treat their black fighters or their fighters that are not of, you know, uh, Anglo heritage. And they treat them completely different. They're loved. They're respected. Um, Anthony Joshua. Prior, yeah, prior, to when, when prior to when championship he wins, level. Prior to championship level. Right. Right. When he wins, I mean, fucking confetti is falling out of the fucking sky for this guy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's a complete difference in treatment, man. And, and it's only one reason for that. You know, Andre Ward is much more accomplished than Anthony Joshua has ever been. And he still can't get respected in his hometown or his home country. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely about race. And it's, there's plenty of others, you know, Phil Lomachenko, Miguel Vasquez. Miguel Vasquez was not hated when he was the lightweight champion. They liked him. He wasn't as popular as others because he's on the lightweight division. But he wasn't talked about like Regan Diaz talked about, you know, like uh, Gary Russell talked about, you know, other slick fighters. He's not ta- he was never talked about like that. He was actually light. You know what I'm saying? So it, has, it definitely has something to do with color, man. Why? Yeah, yeah. Well, with Ward, it's definitely race. I mean, and, and his, talking about him specifically because he's the opposite of the Floyd. Like both said, you know, they didn't want another Floyd made with personality. Okay, he's total opposite of that. You know, showing the willingness to fight these guys in their prime. You know, the best guys in their prime dominate them. You know, don't complain. He just go to work, win. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I mean, they don't. They don't like a prideful black man who doesn't settle for what they expect him to, you know, just throw out a number. He said, okay, boss, you know, yes, master, I'll sign the dotted line. You know, they don't like a, a black man or a woman to stand up for what they feel, you know, they deserve. And, you know, they don't like to say a black person is in power being great. So it's about race, man. There's no other way to cut it, no excuses. If you don't like this, fuck you. Yeah, he, he, fuck couldn't you. Have got, he couldn't have got away with the shit Kovalev did as far as walking out of exactly. the press conference and – you know, none of that shit. You know, he, he couldn't have got away with none of that. You know, even a post-press part, uh, conference, you know, telling people to shut up and, you know, as as a promoter, you know, uh, that, that we've seen Kathy Duva do. Like, he couldn't get away with that shit. Nobody's really said anything about wow. what Kathy Duva did wow. um, in the aftermath of that post This motherfucker, Andre Ward, didn't go to the face-off, and that's all we heard about. But nobody oh, knew yeah. that, Col- that Colbert yeah. didn't even show up.
people who are. A majority of this country are supposed to be Christian, right? So you should immediately uh, have a dislike for Conor McGregor after he just said that he will kick the shit out of Jesus Christ if they fought. You see what I'm saying? But in coming into this fight, what are you hearing more about? Oh, I hope Conor McGregor fucks him up. That's what you're hearing. He has more of a fan base. This is a man that just said he kicked Jesus Christ's ass, but he still has the fan base, or at least the positive fan base. What the fuck That's does the that point. tell you? And being be, 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 he's not that far from uh, personality wise from Floyd. He says what he wants. He does what he wants. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it, he just got a lot of. He got a lot of. I mean, we, 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 we didn't we win. didn't we didn't put more shine on that fight than I care to give to you for our, for our platform. But I get what you go. Let me to. let me speak on something real quick, and I think uh, I want to piggyback on what Bo said about the about the uh, text that Ward has said to uh, Kovalev. If y'all look at the last fight press conference, Virgil Hunter. Was talking about how these promoters don't pay pay these European fighters for these big fights. If y'all, because you notice, oh yeah, got, yeah. got paid more than Kovalev, and Kovalev was a champion. And Virgil Hunter put that seed out there too. So this is way before that text that I mean that tweet that uh, Ward that sent out. I mean, I, I kind of want to touch on something else, but we've we got a lot of topics to touch on still. I kind of want to touch on this one last little uh, little factor as far as uh, what's next for Ward, man. Um, he's mentioned cruiserweight because um, I definitely don't think he needs to fight any of these uh, guys coming up that like heavyweight. I don't think they do anything to cement his legacy. I mean, uh, down the fight. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that, puts that, that, puts him, that puts him at an undisputed, so I could understand that. But He's as far as there. fighting anybody else at 175, <laughs> I mean, is there anything else he really needs to do there? Um, so that's let me get a quick take on that one before we go on our next topic because I kind of want to get Chris on before we get too get too late. Um, what I'd do like you guys think as go, far as what he? Go ahead. I'd like I, I'd like to see him go to cruiserweight simply because it's easy pickings. He can fight Myrus Bradis. He could fight Dennis Lebedev. You know what I'm saying? He could take uh, uh, Murat Gassiev. He could fight all three of them. That's a that's a pretty easy win in my book for Andre Ward. And if he takes that one of their belts, that's uh, cha- that's him being a champion in three different weight classes. Then if he wants to go to heavyweight, he would have already had you know the um, the warm up at cruiserweight. If he decides to go to heavyweight, I say take Joseph fucking Parker or try to get into that WBA slot where you can fight one of them motherfuckers at, uh, on the WBA rankings because them niggas are trash. You know what I'm saying? So, so I mean, that's, that's an easy route for Andre Ward if he does this. I, I want to see him move up the right way. Don't skip cruiserweight and then go to heavyweight. Just try to become a three-time champion in three weight – or a three cha- uh, champion in three weight classes, then go to heavyweight and try to achieve the fourth. Yeah. Um, I think – I think he should try to unify the whole division like heavyweight first, then then target Usyk or one of the other champions at Cruiserweight, and then go for Parker, which I think he can beat Parker, but he needs time, like TK said, to get his body right for that type of challenge. Yeah, and I know mm-hmm. he's going to want to go out to the top gun at Cruiserweight, so I can see him actually want to take on a Usyk or, you know, um, who's probably, I think, probably the the highest rated guy at Cruiserweight. I actually, I actually want to see him Fight that motherfucker that's holding the Gucci belt at 175. Take that, take that, take that, take that off of him. The chicken belt. And uh, unified, the reason why is the WBC. If he unified, he would have unified two divisions. That's something Floyd never yep. did. Then go that's up true. to Cruiserweight and win one title at Cruiserweight, and he would have outdone anything Floyd has ever done. Absolutely. And that's that's Absolutely. the reason why I want him to do it. I want him to do it because he will have done something Floyd has never done in two divisions. Hey, so, yeah, hey you know what, take that nigga that's holding that Gucci belt and take that off of him. Bo, I'm fucking ready to say Andre Ward is better than Floyd Mayweather. He's got it yeah. right there. It's in his sight. It's in his sight, yeah. nigga. And, I, you know, I, I follow Floyd ever since the motherfucker fought Gennaro Hernandez, actually before that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm ready to say... Andre Ward can be he better than Floyd better. Mayweather if he, if he puts his right ducks in a row and he accomplishes uh-huh. everything that he sets out, nigga. 
Oh man, that's, that's all day, bro. Real oh, yeah, yeah and, and and I really want him to do it because you know Roy, you know God bless him because he because even when they asked him about Conor McGregor. And, you know, taking the air out of his fight, he said, but, you know, shit, that's Floyd. I can't say he's earned that right. That's the kind of dude. That's why I'd be tripping when he hate. I'm like, this is the kind of dude he is. Because I'd be like, yeah, man, fuck that motherfucker. He knew he took the air out of my shit. Oh, hateful ass yeah. nigga. That's what I would have said about it. So I want him to do it. So we as fans, Ward ain't going to say it. When somebody brings up Floyd, I say, shit, Ward, Floyd ain't done nothing that Andre Ward has ever done. Are you fucking nuts? Shit, <laughs> Ward took that shit right back. But Ward took that shit right back with, some, with that knockout. Shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, yeah, so, yeah, don't take that Gucci belt off that nigga. Uh, you know, you know, go to the chicken farm. Go to the chicken farm. You know, look for that gigantic <laughs> motherfucker back there laying eggs. That's an easy fight. I see fly bias as hell not hitting that mute button. And that's an easy fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I. Uh, uh, I'm kind of tired of this this man every week. Every week, <laughs> man. You want more than we do, man. You want more than we do. Every week, I got to deal with this, but we we gonna go to another to our next topic. Cut this one short. <laughs> 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 uh, we I actually want to bring in one of uh one of our guys on the line, man. Um, he actually he's been uh, working with ESPN for a long time, man. So he's gonna bring some news and help us uh, go into this next topic as far as uh top rank actually announcing a deal with the ESPN, um, what to do, uh, I, what I believe 18 cards next year and Pacquiao and, uh, Jeff Horn is slated to, to, to kick that broadcast off, I believe. Um, so we going to bring, uh, our boy Chris Henderson on from ESPN, uh, four corners. Uh, what's going on, man? If I can guys? This, uh, how's it going? What's going on, Chris? Hello, Chris? What's up? What's up, Chris? <coughs> Not much, man. How y'all doing? What's happening? What's happening, Chris? Mm-hmm. I know Bo's drinking. I heard him talk about Golden Boy and Rigo. So uh, I mean, uh, yeah. I know Bo's <laughs> But <laughs> um, I mean, uh, the, what kind of uh, info can you can give us as far as uh, the, I guess, details on this deal with Top Rank, and uh, what kind of fights can we expect? Because I'm actually hearing about Gilberto Ramirez and Jesse Hart possibly being in the works. That's too. possibly That's in the end of September. Expect. Yeah. Um, is that something we could expect to be airing on ESPN? You can Google probably Google. expect every everything he's got going to ESPN <laughs> or ABC. Okay. We're, this, ESPN's owned by Disney, and Disney owns both of them, ABC and ESPN. Right. Okay. Um, do you know any of the financials involved? I mean, I guess you, we kind of want to do a comparison because, you know, we got Golden Boy on ESPN now, um, and we had PBC on there previously prior to uh, – the lawsuit, I guess, uh, you know, in the settlement to where, you know, Golden Boy and uh, Top Ranker are now in that position. So do you know anything as far as the financials? Um, is the ESPN actually paying for these fights, or is it like a time Yeah, ESPN share? is paying for the fight. They were paying a rights fee for it, um, just like HBO done, just like Showtime does. You know what I mean? Um, okay. PBC kind of got away from that, and I don't blame them. I would have too. I mean, but you can only thank Al Hank for this happening. Really, it's been away from free TV for a long time. Right. You know how how long ago they take Friday night fights off? You know, long time ago. Two years. Okay, and that was the last thing. Tuesday night fights on USA Network's been gone. Yep. You know, you watch that video of Brian Sutherland. You know, guy that can't box with the shit from North Carolina. I was actually watching that card live on USA Network when mm-hmm. that shit happened. But I mean, it's been a it's been away from for a long time, you know. And if it wasn't yep. for Al Heyman, um, we wouldn't be back now. I'm not gonna lie. Really, not. As far as the uh, actual financials, it's gonna depend. It's a per card basis. There's seven cards gonna happen this year, eighteen next year. Don't think that he's not still gonna have pay per view cards. Though. That's gonna happen. The minute Pacquiao Crawford works out, if it works out, or Lomachenko Crawford works out, anything like that works out, that's going to pay per view. Yeah. But it won't go to HBO pay per view. It'll go to top rank pay per view and Box Nation pay per view. Because yep. he did have, he does have a deal with Box Nation too and Frank Warren. Okay. Um. So is the Golden Boy still uh, going to be airing on ESPN as well in yeah. conjunction with the? Okay. So I, I wanted to get your take as far as um. 
I mean, ESPN seemed to be taking this foot off the gas as far as uh, boxing coverage and whatnot and seeming like it was moving, pushing more towards uh, MMA. Um, that, what's that, that, that done actually uh, going back the boxing route now? I mean, we're picking up Golden Boy, picking up Top Rank at the same time now. Here's um, what's got them. Okay, go ahead. ESPN's lost a lot of money. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, they've lost a lot of money in some of the other networking and the big deals they gave the NBA, the big deal they gave the NFL, stuff like this. You see what I'm saying? So they've got to get back in somewhere where um, they can get in on a lower budget. The, the networking is free. The promotion is free to them pretty much but when you, as far as the commercials and, all, and what have you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And... So they've got to get back in somewhere on the low ground. They're going to probably pick up MMA too. There's a, that contract runs out with Fox and UFC in 2018, into 2018, I believe. But um, they're going to probably pick it, pick that up as well because it's just it, the, the budget is a lot smaller. You see what I'm saying? Hell, boss. Okay. You take guys like, uh, for instance, uh, Trent Dilfer. He was recently let go. You know, if y'all follow football, Dilfer's been with been with for a long time, you know, but he was making a million and a half a year. Whereas guys like Dan Raphael, he's barely making a hundred K. You see what I'm saying? Teddy Atlas is barely making a hundred K. And that's, that's, uh, reality. I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. The budget, so the budget is a hell of a lot budget. smaller. Okay. okay. I hear that. The budget is a hell of a lot smaller to carry boxing or MMA either one. You know, but <laughs> so that's what they're trying to dial back for. Um, they're going to drop some of their NBA programming. Okay. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. But um, now y'all was talking about race earlier in boxing and what people are most. And yes, it's all about color. Oh. Any yeah. man that tells you it's not is lying. Yeah. Yeah. Plain, plain and simple. All right. It's the fact of the matter is this. 60% of the population is still white. People will pay for something they believe is more like them than, the, than, the, than what ain't. You see what I'm saying? They'll yeah. pay for the chance to see the white guy do better. The white man will pay for a chance to see the white guy do good than to pay for the black guy to do good. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's the reality of it. That's what these, these companies look at. When the fact is they're ignoring the skill, completely ignoring the skill. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. I mean, that's, and I get yeah, aggravated. We've, uh, we've actually seen a lack of sponsorship with boxing, and we're actually seeing a lot a lot of it happen now. You know, Under Armour is starting to, to pick up a lot of fighters. Um, you know, uh, I mean, so we, we were actually seeing a lot of growth in boxing. You know, sponsorship was, was limited, you know, for a while. Um, yeah. So I mean, uh, I mean, it's pretty crazy to see the things happening right now. Um, could you tell us a little bit as far as the Pacquiao card in, in general was going on with that one? Um, uh, you're gonna have Ma- Michael Conlon's gonna be on it. It's gonna okay. be like a three and a half hour shot. And is it still airing from Australia? Yes, it'll air from Australia. I think it's nine o'clock on July the first. And there was some rumors about um, Lomachenko Salido rematch possibly airing there. Possibly you know, airing August the fifth. Okay, and that's going to be on ESPN, I'm guessing, as well? Supposed to be. It's not locked okay. in, but it's supposed to be. That's the talk, yeah. Okay. As is I'm... possibly Crawford and then Dongo. Oh, wow, man. So uh, you definitely uh, some nice fights, man, uh, for this year. Um, you got any other tidbits you could put us out on, man? Because I definitely listen to a lot of the things you put out there, man, as far as uh, jumping the gun on stuff. Because you, you, you're definitely early and find out a lot of stuff <laughs> before we or it hits the, a lot of the mainstream press. Yes. <clears throat> yes, he does. Yes, he does. I want to know what you got out of Kovalev and Ward's camp. Okay, um, Jackson's gone, man. I'm going to tell you that. Pretty close to gone. I can't, oh, I yeah. can't, I can't report that. it. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, he's probably gone. All right. I already know that. Cappy <laughs> did as well? Or is, no, is, like, yeah. he's contractually obligated to main event still. Okay. Um, For how long? How long? Um... It's a term. It's a it's a term contract instead of a fight contract. So, but it, there's an option on it too. Kind of like um, the deal Alvarez just went to court for last year. Remember? Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Kind of like that deal right there. Mm. And so he's hey. kind of locked in. 
He's kind of locked in. And um, as far as Ward and them, um, I would like to see him fight Stevenson next. Is he still contracted with the obligated to HBO or is that done? Like, is he no, that was a per fight thing. That's done. Yeah, that was per fight. Um, but, um, uh, okay. Yeah, as far as hey. where I would like to see him fight Stevenson next, who he's going to fight. Andre's not the type of person that's just going to make a decision immediately. It may be a minute before we know who he's going to fight, to be honest with you. Right. Um, it's going to be where the money is. The money fight is probably going back to 168 or meeting De Gaulle somewhere in the middle. Good point. In the UK. That's Good the point. Money, biggest money fight for him right now. I didn't even think about that. You said uh, De Gaulle? Yeah, no. that's the biggest money fight out there for him right now. I agree. Well, I didn't even think about that. But what Pretty I would do if I was yeah. him, and we kind of threw this around today, is possibly if you, if you can get Stevenson take that belt, you're putting some time off. Next thing you know, the cruiserweight winner of the World Series of Boxing uh, tournament is available. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. When that's over. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. He gives us time to get his, get his body acclimated to the exactly. weight right then, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's the hey. route I would go, and I think that's probably the route that's going to end up happening. But who knows? Hey. Hey Chris, this I mean, this be cool. Um, back to Sergey Kovalev. How's his relationship with Kathy Duva? Has he been a winner? Actually, they get along great, man. So he's he's okay with time he's okay How with did that him. come? How did that come about? Yeah, because this is one of the weirdest things we see contractually in the big major belt. I don't like Kathy, and that was friends of awards that she was hollering at over there the other night. And yeah, I don't I don't really care for Kathy. Never have. Her husband wasn't bad, Dan, you know, before he died. Um, but I ain't got much use for Kathy, never have. And uh, But I blame it more so on Egas Clemens for letting this happen. You see what I'm saying? Manager? Yeah. That's his manager. Yes, I was just okay. going to say that. That's his manager. That's his manager, That's man. his manager. The job, I used to manage fighters myself. You know, back when me and Bernard Farsh grew up best friends from five years old. I got a kindergarten picture here hanging in the wall, you know. And... Um, when I was working with him, we never – you don't let that shit happen, man. You just don't let that happen to your fighter. Your job is to protect the fighter. Right. You know what I mean? I don't know what he was doing. I don't know if, if it come down to Kowalf just absolutely wanted to fight under all circumstances. He's going to clear about a quarter million dollars after this probably somewhere in that area. I mean they lost seven, yeah. seven to eight million dollars um, Saturday night. I wouldn't be surprised if Rock Nation's completely done with boxing. They done. But, well, I think that's what done. I was going to actually ask you next because we've been hearing that they're going to actually, with the end of this, uh, well, with the end of this promotion, that they're actually going to the end their boxing division. That's what we've been so, hearing already. I've got um, a, I got an email and a phone call to them. I, I'm not getting a response out of them. I've tried to get all of them since Saturday evening, um, before the, before that card ever started. Because even when I was there, I tried to get a hold of them. I couldn't. You know. Michael Yormark, he um, – see, Rock Nation Sports is doing good. It's the boxing division that's not. You know what I mean? Rock Nation Sports, I mean, where they represent baseball players and other stuff, you know, they're doing okay. But <clears throat> the boxing side isn't. And uh, he just – yeah, I think they're done. I really do with boxing. I do too. That you said Kovalev could actually still clear a million off of a fight. No, 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 about a quarter million. A quarter, okay. Wow. He'll get seventy-five percent of um, he'll get seventy-five yeah. percent of Duva's revenue. Wow, but that revenue is going to come off the gate. It's broke down with a lot of your contracts are broke down. But see, out of that seventy-five percent, he's still got to pay Jackson. His yeah, manager is going to get fifteen percent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Wow. And this is for a pound for pound fight. That is so crazy that this is happening. Never in the history of this sport has two elite fighters in a pay per view. This this should have been a huge pay per view. This is only the second time number one's fought number two, according to Ring Magazine. Anyway, you know what now, I mean? do you blame do you blame Rock Nation as the the, the they held the promotional banner one as being the lead, but I think main event still had an obligation with their fighter being in the main event to, to, to put just as much effort regardless. I blame all of them. Okay. Including HBO. Including HBO. I don't I don't HBO gets um a lot of people know how a pay per view breaks down money wise. Uh, you're talking about 
like 47.5% will go to the promoters. 47.5% will go to the cable company. you got 5% left over, and HBO gets that as a rights fee. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, they really don't have much money invested in it. HBO don't. Not in a pay-per-view production. Now, on a regular Saturday night HBO championship fight night, they do. You know what I mean? They'll buy the time. They'll buy – they'll put the purse up. Let's, you know, people talk about the Rigandale Lomachenko thing, for instance. When this thing was negotiated back in 2015 originally, there was only like $1.2 million all was offered by HBO for both of them guys. You yeah, Machinko had that seven, I believe, a seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar guarantee. Um, exactly. Yeah. Then it come down to where they got to one point seven five million for and it was five hundred thousand apiece, but the other two hundred and fifty thousand of Lomachenko's he was willing to put toward that bonus shit or whatever. And this is why me and both talked about this a long time ago. This is Caribe promotions is shitty. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They're terrible. Like I, I think me and Bo probably a year ago talked about how he's going to end up being a thirty for thirty subject. You know, where are they now? And and it's sickening because he is arguably the greatest talent to ever step in a ring. I agree. Arguably the greatest talent to ever step in a ring. Um, what can you tell us about his situation as well? Coming up with the Rock Nation going out of business. What do you see happening with him? Promotion I would go to Amy and, 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 the, and the weight weight decision. Is he going to? I mean, we see one eighteen and one twenty six is. Man, Yamanaka is a big down. fight in Japan. Will they, will they take that fight? Is that a fight that they'll take? Who? Uh, take his Yamanaka. Yeah, Yamanaka. Yeah, well, Yamanaka. Honda? No, that Honda's fight. not going to let that fight happen. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, especially with a new and possibly, a new possibly on the horizon as well. Yeah, um, that fight's not happening. Um, <clears throat> you got – if I – right now, I mean, if he goes to Heyman, the thing about being with Heyman is you're not committed to any single promoter. All right? Now, the majority of them fights are through Devella. Yeah. Some are Mayweather promotions, you know, like the Garcia uh, uh, bonus fight coming up to Mayweather. Now – but you're not committed to no single promoter for any long-term basis if you're with Heyman. He don't like it. Now, like Stevenson is, for instance, he's uh, GYM. Yeah, yeah. John Canada. Uh, Michael. Yeah. But he that come with the, with him to Heyman. You see what I'm saying? He couldn't just get him out of it. And there's a couple of fights out there. There's what there really ain't nothing out there for him up with anybody without going to Heyman. You got what Mag- Magdaleno. Maybe it, he's with Tom Rank. Yeah, Tom Rank won't make that fight okay. happen. Okay, that's not it's not gonna happen. All right, now Golden Boy's got a decent stable of people at and around that weight class, but none of them's well. I mean, one of them's big names yet. Diego De La Hoya's there. Randy Caballero's there. You know, oh, he beats the hell out of them. Exactly. Golden Boy, now he he, he beats the shit. Out. I mean, and he's back at making a hundred thousand. They can make a name for themselves. Exactly. <laughs> and Oscar ain't gonna let that happen. And um. So he's got to go to Heyman, man. There you're sitting with Frampton, Santa Cruz, Abner Mares. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. Now, yeah. those guys yeah. stuck them at 122. At 126 with Heyman's advice, advisement, um, do those fights happen now? If I, believe he can get, I believe he could get Russell, possibly, if he goes, and Frampton. Russell was actually talking about – Russell made a fucking video talking about how uh, he thinks he can beat him. So, no, I mean, I can, yeah. yeah, he thought he could beat Lomachenko, too, and he landed 8% of his punches. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, yeah. No, so, Russell, Russell gets his ass beat by Kiedem on Rigandale. That's, that's a given. Yeah. But I just like the fact that he's out there, you know, doing something like that because nobody else is doing it. I mean – I, oh. You gotta go all the way. You gotta go to the fucking UK and look at Kid Galahad. That's the only motherfucker that's called him out. You know what I'm saying? And Kid Galahad is on the domestic level. We're not gonna even take that shit seriously. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I totally agree. Totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, completely. It's just absurd. And I don't. I mean, we got Lee Selby's in the UK. Quigs in the UK. Matron is yep. off limits. I don't even go over there. I'm not even interested, you know. And Heyman's yep. proved that he'll work with Hearn anyway. So, 
Well, you got to go to Heyman if you're him. The thing uh, about this, a lot of people go, well, this promoter's not working with this promoter and this promoter. If Golden Boy will work with everybody, a lot more fights can be made. They just got a larger stable that's, fighter that people that's don't realize. What I was just going to ask. I was just going to ask you if, 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 because we know that you got, we know you're offering Pacquiao, Crawford, and Lomachenko, okay, and that's just three guys, three fights. So you still got a whole lot of the fights. If this is going to be successful in any shape, form, or fashion, isn't uh, Top Rank going to have to work with Golden Boy and, and work with Al? going to have to work with somebody. And I believe they're going to start working a little bit with Golden Boy. Um, he's working with Heyman. I mean, he just did. They just did Felix Diaz and Crawford. You know, he's worked with Heyman. And uh, well, as long as Al will agree with Heyman, Golden Boy. The only huh? fight they made, he's made more fights with Heyman and Golden Boy. The only fight that we got from the Cold War being over was Jesse Vargas and Saddam Ali, and that was Monday. Yeah, I know. You're totally right. He's going to have to work with them. He's going to have to work with them because it's just. Uh, you figure what Diaz is down around their weight. Yeah, and I've been saying for a while that he needs to put some of his fighters on loan now, and I mean to keep them busy, especially with HBO getting out the business. But they got that's, the ESPN thing now, and they, you know, that's the only gripe that anybody can have against Heyman is his fighters aren't active enough. Some of them, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's the only gripe. <laughs> There's not another gripe. I remember when Bernard, Bernard Forrest was his first fighter, Al Heyman's very first fighter. Nobody takes care of their fighters like that lineman does. But man, they're in this. They're trying to make a living, just like everybody else gets up and goes to work every morning. That's their job, you know. And there ain't no four hundred one k. So, I mean, they got to get what they can get, and to get the best deal for Rigo, he goes to Alhaman. Plain and simple. He got one hundred twenty thousand um, dollars the night. Yeah, yeah. For that Rock Nation card, uh, pretty pretty. Uh, considering he made seven fifty for the fight with Daenerys, it's been a steep decline. Um, man, and he's for for one of the greatest talents um, in boxing right now, and possibly ever. It, it's ridiculous to see what's happened with his career on the business side. Um, Chris, can you shed a light, some light on the heavyweight division, man? Um, I got a couple of things I want to ask you about that, as far as uh, how close are we to the Joshua and Klitschko rematch being announced? And, I think uh, I'm gonna tell you this. Wilders. I ain't supposed to say this, but I think okay. I think Klitschko's gonna retire, man. Oh, yeah, they said he fifty. Oh, they said he fifty fifty on it. He said he fifty fifty. Yeah. I think Klitschko's going from the interview we did with him about. You remember when he released that thing on Lincoln? Yeah. Okay. Right around that time, it's just it, I think he's gone. I think he's done. He he he's satisfied with the performance he had against Joshua, and he needs to be. He should be. Forty one years old. Yeah. He went in there with a damn line, you know? He knows he can't top it. Yeah, he's not going to do no better. Next time he gets worse. Age don't do nothing but go get, go farther away, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Next, next time it's worse. And uh, he would have <laughs> really put a lot of effort into that training camp. I mean, a lot of effort, more than he's put in in a long time. And that's the best I've seen him look by far, probably since yeah. he beat um, Pavetkin. Probably since he beat Pavek. Uh, um, and Deontay Wilder said he has, has a big announcement as far as this fight. What are we looking at there? Uh, we've been having speculation that it was Bermain Stavern for the longest. Um, I mean, that's not necessarily a big announcement to us, though. I mean, no, so, no. <laughs> um, what do you think that's who it is? Uh, I believe Stavern? it is, yeah. Okay. I'm talking I hope to not. the Stavern's people, but I. Um, he I couldn't – see, Dylan White released a video yesterday, just last night, or really this morning, something like that. You know, Hearn it off the $3.5 million for a Dylan White, Deontay Wilder card. Over there, oh, really? over here in the States. That wasn't that's, – that's not been confirmed either way, but I would imagine over here. And they've been saying Dylan White is supposed to make his U.S. Uh, debut – um, in his next fight, so that's why I'm like, there's some speculation it could be Wilder too as well. Still, could be that uh-huh. could be out there. Uh, <laughs> better fight than Burns to Burns. Could be. I don't I'll, know, I'll, man. I'll, Dylan White is a huge, huge guy. Oh, well, look at who's coming. My question is, haven't seen this match yet. Yeah, yeah. Who's coming? Who's coming? Who's coming? Ain't ain't the best, but we already know what's gonna happen in the rematch with Burns to Burns. He's probably gonna stop him this go around. I mean, here's my question. Here's my question, right, uh, to you, Chris. This is Bernard. 
Hey, what's up? Did he pay? Did he pay Stevan step aside money? Because I thought Stevan was refusing step aside money. That hasn't been agreed upon yet. That's why I still believe it's going to be Stevan who it ends up being. Okay, I agree. I agree. That hasn't been agreed upon yet because that's why I still believe it's going to be him. Okay. I, I, I don't. I don't want to see neither fucking fight. I don't want to see Stevan's go slow bum ass. I don't want to see no motherfucking Dillian White. I don't want to see this dude on skate. He looks like he's on skate and he drinks vodka before he gets in the ring. I ain't trying to see that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's, he's, these are terrible fights, man. I'm not, you know, he, I'm went not life, he went life and death with Derek Chisora. That, that's all I have to say yeah. about Dillian I'm White. I'm not knocking Deontay on that shit. I mean, it's the WBC's fault for having Bermain Severn still ranked number one, and all this motherfucker did was beat Derek Rossi since losing the fucking Deontay Wilder. So it's their fault for still having him there. But at the same time, man, it's like I just I, – these two fights are not going to do it for me when it comes to Deont- Deontay Wilder. He's been trying to call out Joseph Parker, and Joseph Parker's bitch ass has been ducking. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I mean, what, what can we expect from Deontay Wilder now, man? If the, if the Joshua Vladimir Klitschko fight is not happening, if I'm Wilder, I'm like, man, fuck that. I want Joshua. I don't want none of these other bum-ass dudes that I know I can already beat. One I already did. Just give me Joshua. Fuck it. The rematch not happening. Give me Joshua. That's what I need Deontay to do, man. For real. I, I totally I agree. I mean, he's been calling for him. I mean, but then it'll take the luster from the fight a little bit because he'd probably get stripped of his WBC title if he just, if they don't approve, the, which I don't, I doubt they don't approve it. But if they don't approve it, then he'll probably get stripped of his title. Yeah, I mean, I think the these sanctioning organizations just get in the way too much and make things yeah. difficult. You know what I'm saying? There's yeah. no way um, the Bryan should be number one. No, the ranking is I'm going to tell you something. Uh, people laughing about the Pacquiao Horn fight. Do you know if Horn don't take this fight right now, he's Earl Spence is mandatory. Yeah, well, he he was mandated. Well, he was one of the guys that didn't take the fight with them to begin with during exactly. the uh, IBF Eliminator. You exactly. know, um, it's, it's these rankings are a joke. It's all about the money, man. That's all yeah. about the money. Has been um, forever. I think they ought to have some kind of body that puts all the you know one body that ranks them. And that's it. And I guess that's where a ring is supposed to be some kind of bring some kind of clarity to the situation, but they're owned by fucking Oscar. I mean But but I gotta say though, Twan, Oscar I can't stand that motherfucker. I can't stand his organization, but they handle the ring magazine rankings pretty well. You know what I'm saying? Like I agree. I, go off I, agree. I agree. I agree. I vote on this. I got to agree. They were yeah. one of the first ones to put Andre Ward as number one pound for pound when ESPN exactly. had the other Exactly. Um, exactly. So, so speaking on the organizations, man, let me uh, keep it with the heavyweights. Luis Ortiz, man, it is looking like he, he's being he's being dick still. Um, you know, IBF grand this exception, you know, keeping Pulev, you know, uh Pulev's not gonna be able to get his fight. Well, I guess if Klitschko retire unless Klitschko accepts it. Um, what what's happening? What's gonna happen with Luis Ortiz and with all this organizational uh, issues as far as Bermain Stavern, He's high ranked by the the WBC as well. Uh, Luis Ortiz, um, as well as with the being ranked to, to fight Anthony Joshua. Um, so what do we see with him happening as far as how soon will we see him getting the title shot, man? <laughs> well, I wish I could answer that, man. He's he, he that's a, he's been raw. I mean, he's been. Every way they could screw the man, they try. Uh, but he's not going to get the next fight with Josh. I can guarantee you that. That's um, is, that, is, Eddie, is that a fight that Eddie Hearns even willing to entertain uh, with Joshua? You know, even with the no. mandate, possibly. I don't think so. I really don't. He's a little pissed at him over this deal where he left and went to Al Heyman. Wow. He had to do okay. what he had to do. Exactly. I totally agree. Totally agree, guys. But. Do you think <laughs> reality do you, do you is think that he has, Do you think that Eddie Hearn was trying to keep steer him away from Joshua with signing him hey, initially? Yeah. What do you yeah, think? Yeah. Tell me what you think, and I'll tell you it's right. You can tell that by the motherfuckers he had him fighting. And when yeah. Lewis Scott and David Allen, that did, he totally devalued Lewis Ortiz. Lewis Ortiz yeah. be Brian Jennings. And I said, he went from Brian Jennings to David Allen and Malik Scott. He devalued yep. the shit out of him, man. Hey, hey, girl. Yep. Chris, do you think of the outside chance that after a while the uh, takes care of 
of her assuming that's the fight, that we can see Louis Ortiz face him? Because I know Louis Ortiz isn't that far away from being the number yeah, one. Yeah, he's like number three. I think he's number three. Yeah. Well, I believe um, I believe you won't see him match up to Wilder until they think he's too old to beat Wilder. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Everybody's scared of uh, Joshua. I mean, not Joshua. Or Ortiz. Yeah. Or everybody's people scared of uh, Anybody with the set eyes. Like I was telling, I think I commented earlier, talking about me telling EJ that 90% of the public don't know what range ownership is. All right. Yeah. Anybody with a set of eyes can look at Louis Ortiz. Anybody knows what the hell they're looking at and go, hey, man, this guy's for real. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's yep. for real. Keep this son bitch away from our guy. You know what I'm saying? So, yep. and I'll, every team's got that guy that goes, hey, you know, I'll tell you, Coble, our team, Don Turner was that guy. You know what I mean? Hey, look here. <laughs> you know, we don't want to fuck with that guy over there. That's the reason Bitter <laughs> that's the reason he ain't fought harder again. Yep. <laughs> I mean, better be able to whoop his ass. He'd have done what Andre did. I truly believe it. Boxing, man, mm-hmm. they got to get better with this year. They can, I can't believe Ortiz. He might not ever get a title shot again. Mm-hmm. He may not, man. Well, I'm, I'm, well, you said that they might not fight Ortiz until they think he's too old. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, that's... that's uh, <laughs> he that's, might be there. That's oh, probably I, that's probably a year or two away, goddamn. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I question them Cuban guys anyway. I think Rick goes, I think he's got to be 42, 43 years old. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at him. We question, we question old Yellow's old Yellow's documentation all the time on here. Ain't that right? Yeah, yeah I mean, I really I quite, do. So. <laughs> yeah, I, you think we go 42? I'm just joking. I, I don't know how old he is, man. He's 42. You see his eye uh, close, his eye closed and stuff. No, he's he's like 42, 42. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not 42, but y'all, uh, y'all within range. So that's, that's I, I wouldn't be surprised. Eye. I know I'm a few years older now, but uh, I couldn't move like that at 42. No, no. <laughs> that's what I, hey, I couldn't move like that when I was 18. Ask Roy Jones. He whooped my ass. <laughs> 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 oh, <man. laughs> You know what, real talk though, I, I actually question Bo's documentation. That motherfucker look older than forty uh how old are you Bo? <laughs> Bo you question the documentation? I question that one seventy five is what I question. Oh, oh my oh, god, that's two fifty. That's two fifty. Uh uh. Question the six one two while you at it. <laughs> I keep telling y'all I got I got documentation to prove that. <laughs> From how many years ago, though? <laughs> I and, 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 is, and is it fudge like the Cuban documents that you came over here with? <laughs> <laughs> he paid some guy at the border down there in Miami to pay, make this thing. You know? <laughs> Y'all sound like some haters. <laughs> oh man, I'm just giving hard time. Um, I mean, I, I get. I'm glad we got you on, Chris. You actually shared a lot on a lot of things. We actually was going to go on into uh, this whole, uh, I guess, George the 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 World Boxing Super Series. Um, the initial signing with the super middleweight class has been George Groves and Matt. Yeah, Ford I announced that about a week ago, I guess, something like that. Or okay, four days ago, I yeah. announced it. Yeah. And Matt Korobov is looking to get in the tournament. What other names can we expect to, to get in there, man? Because mm, it's kind it's of going to be more than your uh, We got the cruiserweight pretty much situated. There's been no big names other than Groves announced for 168 tournament. Okay, you're not probably not going to see you're not going to see Ramirez. All right, for 168, you're not going to see him. You're not gonna, probably not going to see no top ranked people. Probably not going to see no Golden Boy people. I mean, this is Richard oh. Schaefer we're talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah, and however that deal was handled, it was handled wrong on both sides. If you want to be real about it, the deal with Schaefer and Golden Boy and the split and stuff, it was handled wrong on both sides. So there is no love lost between them, you know. And EJ touched on like Oscar being fairly fair with Ring Magazine. Well, think about it. Hell, they had Floyd number one for a long time, and ain't nobody hates more than Floyd Mayweather. You yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> Um, what about uh, James DeGale? No. I know he's uh, he's injured right now, but can we expect that? Because I know Groves is uh, wants that a rematch as well uh, with DeGale. Can we expect him possibly to be in that mix with uh, being a Schaefer tournament and you know his alliance with Heyman? 
Um, I doubt it. I doubt it. What about Ben Avedo? That, no, that's that's still a big. That's a still a big. That's a big money rematch right there. If they could actually swing it. Um, huge. Yeah, the huge. girl seems to be. Uh, I don't know. A lot of people have a lot of questions about him right now. You know, uh, he's. Uh, I guess Chris Eubanks has called him out recently as well. Oh, well. Yeah, he uh, he did, he did, and uh, but I don't. The girl says he's not fighting. Him, you know, he, he's not interested in fighting you, ain't. And uh, I don't know. He can get his I, I basically want to ask you: Do you see this World Boxing Super Series at one sixty eight being a remake of uh, the Super Six? Like, oh, can it, no, not, can, oh it, can, no. it, can it live up to that? Oh okay. no. They all got the names, man, and, and the, some of the names that was in there, they older. Yeah. You know? um, okay. I mean, Kessler's you know, talking about legitimately coming back for this. Yeah, he's been yeah. talking about that for months. I'm waiting yeah. on this motherfucker to do it. Yeah, yeah well, not next month. We did speak on that on one of our shows uh, a while back, actually, about Kessler coming back. We'll, we'll know for sure next month. Okay. Who everybody is. We're not far away. Should be the week after the Pacquiao fight, I believe, or announcement, something like that. Okay. But um, they really, right. their main goal is to try to get two champions from in each division. They got it in um, Cruiserweight, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. With Breedis and... Uh, Breedis and uh, Gassi. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know who they're going to pick up at super, at super Middleweight to add to it right now. Do you think the winner of the real uh, Smith fight could be a participant or, or no? The Darrell Smith fight, I doubt it. Um, Callum but, Smith, if he wins, there's an outside chance of it, but I think that fight's going to be too late for it to be part of that deal. What about Jose Ukatage? I mean, I know he got the situation with Andre. I don't know if that's going to be changed or whatever, but. Oh, no, I, mean, I got a message in. His manager, Sean Gibbons. And uh, I sent him a message about, I think it's been a day and a half ago now. I need to talk to him again because he's Toledo's manager too. And uh, <clears throat> trying to find out something on both of them. Um, but that, that's that's a name that could very possibly be in it, I believe. Yeah. Hey, Chris, what, what's the deal in the Cruiserweight division? Apparently, Humanov is out and they bumped their equals up to the WBA regular champion. So what happened to Shumanov? Um, I, that's something I couldn't, I can't give you a straight answer to right now, but I'd be speculating. I know Shumanov is injured right now. Um, he is I mean, injured, but I mean, as yeah, far as why, yeah. you know, the deal, why, why it went down like it did, I couldn't give you a, an honest answer on it right now. Okay. Without speculating, and I'm trying not to speculate no more than I have to. Um, okay. I mean, well, speculation today all over Twitter is, you know, uh, Kovalov's going to top rank. Uh, Ward and Joshua signed for a catch weight of 225. Kovalov's got $14,000 on one of them fake Raphael tweets. Yeah. You know, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. I mean, you can't. And as long as stuff like that's out there, I try to keep as close to the best as you. you know, if you'll follow uh, like four corners, you'll notice my shit's pretty dead on. I'm ahead of the game, but I'm dead on the money. You know what I mean? Like when I announced the Trout fight quite a bit. I mean, her fight quite a bit before uh, anybody did. I announced uh, Crawford and Dongo quite a bit, but it's so, a lot of these people won't let. They won't give you a confirmation. You see what I'm saying? They'll mm-hmm. hold off, and uh, you can ask Wilson. Or Willie the Kid, you can ask him. That's his nickname. <laughs> I almost <laughs> announced the Lufkin Canelo. I almost did it before they fought. When I found out Lufkin was going to be there, I was like, they're going to announce that damn fight tonight. Because all mm. week when I talked to him out there at the summit, he wasn't going. He wasn't going. He wasn't going. He wasn't going. And then, boom, he's there. I'm like, son of a bitch. Yep. Huh? Yeah. They kept it here. Yeah. They did kept it, it here pretty good. It definitely had a, a WWE, a WWF uh, appeal to it that as far as how they did that shit. The uh-huh. whole deal was a joke. You know, the actual numbers for that Canelo Chavez fight's only like 880,000. 
Okay, so they're saying they cleared a million, uh, or we were hearing initially that it. Well, part of that's million. that uh, theater thing they did. Okay. Yeah, part of that's that theater thing they did. And uh, it's going to happen again with the Golovkin and Canelo fight. They're going to be in theaters again. So you can go watch um, the fight for like 15, 20 bucks. What are you expecting as far as number pay per view wise for that one? What are they expecting that what it can do realistically? Um, they're trying 1. to make it a super fight. Okay. About 1.5, 1.6. Um, they're doing a big, big promotion with it. He's, are are we expecting ticket prices to be in the main pack range? Because I know they oh, got the pre-sale tomorrow. Um, oh, I want to go to the fight, but if this I think I shot, sale, the, I think I shot the ticket prices out about three weeks ago. What they so that that was actually so that was actually legit prices. Uh, That's pretty close. I know, yeah. limited, I know you're saying it was limited seating and all that publicly, mm-hmm. or uh, limited uh, public public tickets for that. About one five thousand tickets gonna be available to the public. Yeah. Wow, and they they're doing the pre sale tomorrow, so those are gonna pretty much be gone already yeah. within it, within minutes with ticket box yeah. and all that shit. I think you're yeah. talking fifteen hundred dollars is where you're gonna start at twelve hundred somewhere in that area. They're gonna start, and that's just for nosebleeds, man. Crazy, yeah. crazy. You should be able to get a media pass. Um, I might be able to. We got I, I, our owner usually goes uh, of our site, so if I could get a second one, I mean, he might be able to. Usually for for yeah. these big pay per views, they allow you one. Like we've done double at a couple of uh, fights, but not the pay per views. It depends on the person you know at the promote at, at Golden Boy or K two. I can get one from each each promoter. You see what I'm, I'm saying? I'm gonna have to start hollering at you, Chris, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, I can get one from each promoter. Um, right. But my seats won't be together. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And uh, right. we definitely want to thank you for coming on, Chris. Man, you shed a light on a lot of things. But like I said, I pay attention to your channel for for a lot of tidbits and you know breaking stuff because you you break stuff before a lot of the other outlets, man. So we appreciate you coming on and shedding light on things, man. No problem, guys. I I, I love every one of y'all guys. Y'all do a great job, man. On here, you do a great job. You know, in the groups, y'all do. Bo, I subscribe every damn way I know how to your channel too, okay? Okay. No problem, man. Bye. All right, so we got a lot of tackle right there, man. Um I guess the next topic we can go into is pretty much uh, we, we talked top ranked a lot today already. Um, well, I guess we want I kind of want to get some more thoughts from you guys on this one as far as uh, the World Boxing Super Series. I, I threw out James DeGale's name um, at 168. He mentioned Darrell and Duskadegi. Is there anybody off top hand that you guys could think of that can make this tournament, you know, worthwhile? Because it looks like the cruiserweight division is shaping up to be a good one, you know, with world titles going to be at stake and, uh, you, you, you know, uh, unifications possibly. Um, so what for Caleb Plant. Yeah, I was about to say Caleb Plant. They, they might, might as well. Well. David Benavidez. Might as well. I was just going to say oh, David yeah. Benavidez. 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 That, that's great. He, he would be He would be my Andre Ward pick of that. If they did Mine, that. My, yeah. I agree. I actually agree with that one too. Yeah, that's and a then, very strong call, y'all. To have a veteran, I mean, you can get uh, Kessler coming back, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, who could be the the uh, fucking Kessler and Abraham of, of the old heads? You know, the end of the tournament. And um, shit. I, I don't know. Thing, this thing's not that's slated it. to start for a while, so I'm like, you know. That's it. We could that's actually hard. see. He's going to fight your, the Bertha Ramirez late September. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we yeah, already okay. see uh, Chris said that we probably wouldn't see any top ranked names involved in this anyway. Um, okay. But maybe, I don't think maybe, maybe Quillen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. He's moved up to 168 as well. He now looked he's in, in the first mix. round. He looked right. Hey, hey, he, hey, was, he, yeah. he, he <laughs> might, but he's a known name. So, I mean, maybe, you know. Eight, yeah, and I get this name in the mix uh, pretty fast, and whatever they're doing, if they could get a, you know, we got a titleist and um, George Groves in it, you know, um, so that puts I, you know what? Or, or Andy Lee, shot. or Andy Lee, somebody I heard. Him. He, he say Matt Warball, so I mean, I'm not trying to see no, I ain't trying to see Andy Lee, but check this nah. out. Y- y'all are right. Peter Quillen does have a slight name, but I don't think he's gonna bring 
he's going to bring uh, support to the tournament because he hasn't done shit. First of all, Peter Quillen had an asterisk next to his name, you know, from a lot of fans. It was like, you know, he's winning, but we don't know how good he really is because he's not fighting anybody of note. And then when he actually got in there with Danny Jacobs, got obliterated, niggas was like, okay, he sucks. That's what we thought from the beginning. So him being in the tournament, that's not going to bring anybody to the tournament. They're not going to be like, oh, shit, Peter Quillen, niggas? Yeah, I'm in that mode now. They're going to say that's the guy that was in uh, that's the, yeah, they're gonna say, that's the They're going to say, they're going to say, that's the guy that fought Usher in Hands of Stone. That's what they're going to say. <laughs> Man. Uh, we yeah. got we got um, Arthur Abraham and uh, Chris Eubanks fighting, but you know um, the same slate at the start for a while. Do you think we could see either of them possibly being involved, or especially Eubanks Jr.? Um, this seems like this has his name written on it, especially with George Rose uh, signing signing on Eubanks. Um, yeah, will be a part of it if his daddy can control ticket prices. Door administration, ticket management, <laughs> off lighting, ring walk, sitting charts, announcers, table, reporters, venue, car parking attendants, and check cashing people. If so <laughs> it, it would be this would be a perfect uh perfect venue for you you banks, you know, yeah, you got the American crossover, you know, a fight's happening here. Um I, if I'm him, and you know I, I win the Abraham fight, of course, I, I'm definitely entertaining joining this this series. Um, I think it would be a good move for for him. Um, I wanted to speak on this one. I don't think the Gale's gonna be in the tournament because I know he got he had surgery. He's, 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 he's right for, yeah. I think he's looking for um, a George Groves unification bout in um, the UK later on this year. You know, good you fight. Mandatory coming up. Well, George Rose is a World Boxing Super Series, though. So, I mean, yeah. with that... He probably going to fight Andre. He's mandatory. Well, the, 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 uh, Andre got to beat Ustadegi. That, you know, they're going to rematch they, that they one. Like that. I think they did. Hey, you know what, man? Maybe Andre uh, uh, can join the is going to beat that nigga, man. He, was, he had him hurt before the fucking knockout blow. He, he's going to beat Andre. I, I I'm about to put my money on Uzi Tigua, dog. I mean, Real it tough. was definitely a tell. Uh, it was a short fight, but I, I got two different tells out of the fight. Like I think Uscada he dominated the first what uh two, three, the first yeah. couple rounds, yeah. And then I think Andre was starting to, to puzzle him, and then you had but did that you shit see at the end of the round. Like, no, 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 man. He got the mental lesson, man. He ain't, he ain't going to be what we thought he was going to be. No, fam. Did you see what the fuck happened before he hit him with that final shot? He came in, he backed Andre uh, Durrell up, had him on the ropes, and he landed that left hook. That hurt Andre. He was done, dog. If there was an extra 10 seconds, Andre was getting knocked out. Real talk. Well, this is, Go back this on. is why I agree. I'm going to tell you why I agree. <laughs> because we, we, this is something we talk about all the time. From a mental aspect, when Andre refights this dude, that's what he's going to always be thinking about is what happened in the first yep. fight. He's not going to fight the same. And even yep. if he don't get hurt or knocked out, he won't fight the same, and it will give the appearance that Usyk is being more effective and more aggressive. Yep. That's why, yeah, I agree with 2K. I agree with yeah. 2K because now nah, that shit is in that boy's head because 2K is right. It was illegal. The, the punch was at exactly when the bell fucking came. But yeah. I'm not even like talking said, about that punch. Punch. No, he's talking about the right, punch. Yeah, but it was the punch. Yeah, the one before that. <laughs> the one before oh, that. Is. And you know, yeah. and if you run with your shit, I honestly don't believe Uz Katigwa should have been disqualified, man. He shouldn't have been. Because that, no, that punch is right on the bell. You know what I mean? But the one before that, he was gone. I yeah. swear to God, yeah. man, go back and check it. If there was 10 more seconds in that round, Andre would have been done. He would have gotten knocked yeah, out. Yeah, he, he it was just a, yeah, I mean, like I said, he put himself in that position too, but just you know, he was winning there around and then I don't know what the hell he thought. Yeah, he went, went to the corner, to the, went to the ropes, yeah. And then he was leaning. Yeah. Yep. It's just like he, he ain't knew what the me. fuck he was gonna throw with leaning. You know what I'm saying? But well, it still he got connected, you know what I'm saying? So he I it's definitely know what y'all talking about as man. far as it Yeah. Um so we'll see, man. Like I said, I, I think Andre was coming on in the fight, but like TK said, um, 
You know, he, he was getting hit, you know, with the last 10 seconds he got hit with that, yeah. that, that barrage. Um, so, you know, even the fight before, the, the punch before the one that, you know, was questionable, you know, he was still getting hit. He got hit with two successive ones at that, not just yep. that one. So, um, yeah, it, it definitely, um, it's definitely a good rematch, but you got to think mentally what's in the back of uh, Darrell's head, you know, yeah. um, especially, yeah. you know, the, everything that happened in the aftermath with his uncle and all that as well. Um, that being the second time, something similar to this happening, um, even, even though this one was probably not as questionable, you know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, it is definitely in the back of his head, I think, moving forward, and we'll see what happens. Um, we're going to get into our next topic, though. Um, shit, we got, um, looks like Brian Jennings signs with is signing with top rank, and uh, I believe they had his first fight announced, but I, I can't find the damn article anymore. Um, it's in the Parker fight, huh? Uh, that's what it's looking like it's going to end up being with them. Uh, you know how they do the in-house thing with, uh, with top rank all the time. You know, it's already written on the walls, like they say with Michael Jackson. Um, what do you guys think about this signing, uh, period? I mean, outside of the possible Joseph Parker fight, what else is there for Brian Jennings? Um, I'm going to start off with Bo with this one. Uh, see, the, first off, I'm 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 happy for Jennings because he has we haven't seen him since he lost to Louis Ortiz. He's been bounced around quite, quite a few times because at one point he was with Gary Shaw, and you know he's another byproduct of that that Rock Nation shit and Gary Shaw. Yep, you know, with the yep, yeah, yeah, uh, he yeah, he's Gary Shaw. So he's in top rank now. The only thing is, I don't know if top rank is going to do to him. As far as what I mean by is bring him in, kind of like how they did Tim Bradley with Pacquiao. Well, listen, listen, we're going to bring Brian Jennings in to, you know, take care of the tough dudes so we can keep giving Joseph Parker these soft touches so we can get a big money fight with him, which is how they fucking did Timothy Bradley was you fight all the, you know, the hard-ass motherfuckers, the Ruslan, Pavarta calls, and all them motherfuckers, and so Pacquiao can have this easy path to this big fight with Floyd. So I don't know if that's what they're going to do with him. But it's it's still interesting, but it's also like he's like I said he's been going for two years. So what so what does he what does he have left? And depending on who you put him in there with next, like who do you put him in there with next? That so we can see if his ring rust isn't there, if we can see how far he's gonna go. But you know, I hope I I really hope they do some good with him because the only person to really beat Brian Jennings was Vladimir Klitschko, and he got in there with Luis Ortiz and. Of oh, yeah, you know, Lewis Ortiz beat him, but those are still two top quality heavyweights we're talking about. So it's 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 just gonna be interesting and I don't know how many fights they can make with him because the majority of the heavyweights that are somewhat name name heavyweights that we recognize are are still on the on on the Al Heyman side. But it is good to see top rank getting into the heavyweight division because they only got partial like some type of partial stuff with with Joseph Parker. This would be a much yeah, full fledged. Yeah, this would be a full. Yeah, and Andrew Reed, So this would be the second full fledged heavyweight that they got. All right. Um, I guess. Uh, what do you guys can, can expect initially as far as some fights with him with this top, uh, top rank banner? Um, I don't see him fighting Parker. Uh, right off the bat, of course he's been idle. You know, hasn't fought in a while. So, who do you, how do you guys see him lining up as far as uh, you know, net successive fights? Um, I'll go ahead and get this one to TK. What was the question again? Um, you know, just seeing him get busy again. What do you see in terms of him activity wise? Some some of the fights out there for him just to get his name back out there. And uh, I mean, before we could see him possibly in there with a Joseph Parker, you know, is this Brian Jennings? There. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, there there was a time where I thought Brian Jennings was going to be a big major player in, at heavyweight, and then he ran into Klitschko, and then he ran into fucking Luis Ortiz. So now it's really Brian Jennings will be nothing more than a um, a contender that will lose all of the major title fights. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, possibly, again, like I said, that WBA route is like golden for motherfuckers that have never gotten a belt because that those rankings are terrible. 
know what I'm saying? They got old ass niggas that are older than Bo fighting for the title. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, and that's fucking old as shit to be older than Bo. You know what I'm saying? So. Only under the American records. Only under the American. Yeah. I mean, under the fake documentation. Exactly. So I'm just saying, man. You got, you got. I think he should go that route if he's gonna, if he's gonna get a title. I think he might lose to Joseph Parker. That's probably the easier fight for him if he takes on one of the champions for a title. But I think he might lose that fight, man. He gets knocked out by by Deontay Wilder. At one point, I thought he could beat Wilder. Not anymore. Um, he gets knocked out by Anthony Joshua. So, and, you know, of course, um, if uh, Tyson Fury were to come back and he's in shape, he loses that fight as well. So, I mean, it, it's like they're Hayes? really... Yeah, David Hay knocks his ass out, too. <laughs> so, there really, <laughs> so, there really is no fucking... There really is nothing for Brian Jennings other than being a contender, man. You know what? I take that back. If David Hayes Achilles, if that shit don't know how to stay intact, then he he fuck around and lose that fight to uh, Brian Jennings. But if we got the 100% David Hayes, he, he knocks him out too. So the only Good motherfucker enough. that the only motherfucker that Brian Jennings can beat right now is Tony Bellew. <laughs> Anybody beat Tony Bellew, nigga? <laughs> Hey, it ain't it ain't no way. How much? Hey, how much does James Conner does he weigh when he comes to you know? Is he like is he high twenty two thirty? You want? Joseph Parker, he's closer to two thirties now. He ain't been looking. I'm talking about Jennings. Jennings, Jennings is on the lower like, side. Yeah, he couldn't make one. He couldn't make cruising weight. Nah, hell nah, he ain't making cream there. Yeah. He's vegan. Uh, he, he, yeah. Nah, he can't. Uh, yeah. He's like two twenty. He's like two twenty five, Jenny. Yeah, he fucked. He fucked then, so uh, shit like two, like he said, he'd be a French contender or or a fucking interim champion at most, so uh, or some shit like that. But he's going that WBA the high. route. I mean, like I said, we ain't seen him in the ring since two thousand fifteen. Um. What do you guys, how do you think he matches up with Andy Ruiz? Because I could see that being a potential fight eliminator to, to get him in there against Joseph Parker Hafton. Um, how do you guys think he matches up with Andy Ruiz Jr.? I think he can out hustle on Ruiz. Depends on which Ruiz shows up. You know, the Ruiz that Paul Parker shows up, then that's like a 50 50 fight, you know, because I thought Ruiz beat Parker, but Parker was fortunate to be fighting in New Zealand, so he got the home, you know, time decision. But, uh, I mean, that's a good fight. Both guys are evenly matched. All right. All right. Um, see what we got up. Uh, guess we got. If you go into our next uh, topic, we got a, a Bantamweight announcement. Uh, current lineal champion and uh, WBC title holder at Bantamweight, Shinsuke Yamanaka. Uh, man, this is a pretty big fight announcement. Um, he, he'll be fighting uh, Luis Neri on August 15th. Um, Bo talked, started talking about this initially, um, but I'll go ahead and let TK touch on this, man. How big is this fight? Um, what are your initial thoughts on it? Hell, I missed it again. What what fight was it? <laughs> Shinsuke Yamanaka and uh, Luis Neri being announced. Um, I mean it's a it's a good fight. I just think uh Shinsu Shinsuke Yamanaka is just he's gonna he's just untouchable, man. I, I really need to I I don't care about him fighting anybody right now unless the nigga the, the opponent's name is Noya Noya get him already yeah, real talk. And I'm not knocking him because, you know, it, I mean he's earned his position but home that he, he just can't be fucked with at one eighteen, man. Huh? You know what I'm saying? So uh, unless it's one of those two guys, and maybe Zolana T, you know, um, Jamie McConnell, but I think he's with Frank Warren, right? Jamie McConnell? Yeah, McConnell with Frank Warren and Heyman. Yeah, Frank Frank Warren is, does a good job of hiding his fighters, so he's not going <laughs> to fight from Siki Yamanaka. So, I mean, that, this is just going to be another fight where he dominates. I think he's going to knock him out within, I give him within eight rounds. You know, but the dude, he's a good fighter. He deserves to be where he's at. But um, Yamanaga is just on another level, man. All right. Uh, I'll pass it on to Bo as well. Um, you had mentioned this fight earlier, so let me uh, go ahead and get your thoughts on this one. Well, 
I I agree with two K ninety percent of what he said, and the only thing, the only thing that I I I gotta go against is I don't think this is going to be as easy for Yamanaka because you know he uh you know Neary is man Neary coming in there he's a hard puncher he's a beast he's you know deep, decent skill and um, he just looks hungry he he just looks like he's hungry he looks like he wanted and he's got that punching power. And makes a hell of a big difference. But I mean, as far as Yamanaka winning, yeah, I definitely could see uh, Suzuki Yamanaka winning. But I, I do, I do think that Yuri has a, a hell of a good puncher's chance to change the outcome. Oh yeah, you, you, we've seen uh, Kamita was able to uh, put Yamanaka down. So I mean, there's definitely a puncher's chance of landing and getting to him. You know, um, but you know, like I said. Uh, Yamanaka, he seems to, 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 to get better as the fight gets progresses as far as... Exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, that's, 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 that's what I'm at. Yeah. Right, because nope. Yamanaka not, is not just his spirit. He has a well... He has a higher ring IQ than Neary, and that, that yeah. could play a big difference in that fight. Definitely. All right. Um, so I guess uh, well, we'll go into what we got coming up. Um, we talked about the Dortico situation, but I guess I'll clean it up just to say um, she went off as well with an eye injury. I don't know if it's possibly career-threatening. Um, the way it seems in the article with them, uh, I guess, making this uh, – taking making the Dortico the regular champ as opposed to interim. Um, it seems like she went off may have some some career threatening injuries uh issues with this eye injury. Um that that's just my take on it. We'll probably learn a little bit more later. Um, but you know, that puts uh Dorticos as a WBA regular champ. Um we still got what I believe what Lebedev is is their super champion and he'll be fighting uh for uh, for that I guess fighting the defending that title soon, which he should have lost against fucking his last fight, but, you know, he got out of that shit as far as only having to put up his IBF belt. Um, so just to clean that up, man, Dortikos is now the regular WBA champ. Uh, we could look forward to him uh, possibly being a mandatory titleist or mandatory position soon after um, Lovita defends that, you know, coming up in uh, August, I believe. Um, mm. so I guess, Yeah. So we're going to our UENL segment. Um, you know, we normally air on Sunday, so I had a different one uh, planned for uh, yesterday. But, you know, with the delaying the show by a day, I actually was able to come across an even better UENL throwback. This was actually uh, a card I was able to attend, man. Um, fucking 1993, Terry Norris uh, knocking out Trey Waters. In my hometown, well, my adopted hometown, uh, San Diego, to retain his WBCW, uh, I mean, a uh, Super Walterweight title. Uh, Tito Tito was w- also <laughs> on that card. You said a WCW title, nigga? Nah, I thought I said, w- I said, I said WBC. <laughs> um, nah, but um, Tito Trinidad was on that card as well and uh, knocked out Maurice Blocker. The, uh, oh, you know, yeah, I, I remember that. that. Title. Um, we were actually, I mean, that was one of the fights that would have been a, a good one uh, at 154. Uh, yeah. Could have been a great one. Terry Norris against uh, Tito Trinidad. But, yeah, man, it was interesting to come across this one, uh, you know, looking up looking up facts for uh, you you know for, for today. Um, and actually being at this card, being able to attend this one, Terry Norris actually, you know, being one of my favorite fighters ever, um, uh, one of Abel Sanchez is first world champions. Um, so, yeah, that's actually, actually what got Abel put on the map back in the day. Um, to me, I think that's his most dynamic champion, even though he won't say that about Terry Norris to this day, which I think is fucked up. But, yeah. um, you know what I'm saying? Um, but that's it, yeah. You know, big up Terry still. He's out there train. Uh, he's a fitness trainer out there in L.A., you know, he's uh, had suffered some, some damages from the ring, but, you know, he's still making most of things, uh, you know, training and whatnot. Um, I said we're going to go into our next segment. Bernard, um, what you got for the fuck your Boston Awards of the Week for us, man? This should be good. Actually, I don't have anything for Come on, man. Five. You can't be doing it. No, man. You got to do something. 
you are you want me to give you something? You want me to give you something? You got to have something. Yeah. This is your segment every week. Yeah. Yeah. You can't die. Hold up. Something. Cover up. Cover up. War just happened. We got all these dumbass fans out here. Nigga, I was on. I was on. Nigga, I'm on that bullshit. Nigga, shit. Let me lead y'all into this, nigga, with y'all. Jumping up and shit, you know what I'm saying? Dad, yeah, I'm going to go in on the Kovalev <laughs> fans, nigga. But I want, before I go in on the Kovalev fans, I mentioned on the last week podcast that I watched the Counterpunch documentary, and I told y'all I was going to do a little quick review on it. Well, let me first off say this. It went over It went over three fighters. It went over amateur boxer Cam F. Awesome, prospect Little B-Hop, real name Chris Colbert, and pro uh, fighter Peter Quillen. Kid Chocolate. So this is kind of basically, I'm going to give you a timeline on the documentary with being filmed for these two, two, three fighters was between like the Mayweather Pacquiao fight in 2014 to like the end when I want to say if that was 2015 when, or 2016 when Peter Quillen got knocked out by uh, Daniel Jacobs. So you kind of could see the gist in this documentary how they follow you know, each person. Also wanted to go for the National Golden Gloves, win that, and try to head to the Olympics. Little B-Hop wanted to become um, a pro fighter. He ended up being signed by Al Heyman and fighting on the undercard of the uh, premier, uh, I think we the first premier um, boxing um, event. And... Peter Quillen, you pretty much saw that situation where you saw him fight in Lee, got the draw. Then you saw him with uh, fight Daniel Jenkins and get the knockout. I will let everybody, I suggest everybody watch it, but I, to me, I kind of saw them kind of in a way attacking uh, Heyman and Mayweather in the documentary. And I'm people I'm saying by attacking wow. Oscar, Oscar, Oscar De La Hoya was in there. In, in, in the documentary, so you know, he said he wanted to blame Mayweather. Uh, C. Kim was in there too. Yeah, you know, he had something to say. You know, they tried, they said some things about Al Heyman on how he. So who, who, the, who produced this? That's what I want. Who was like executive producer? Was there anybody linked to Golden Boy or, or anything like that? You know uh, what? Let me. I got it up right now, and I. Let me Doug see. Fisher or anything, Mario Lopez. Uh, the, the documentary, the director of the documentary is Jay Boulder, B-U-L-G-E-R. And what about, uh, like, executive producers and shit like that? Because if there's got anything to do with them motherfuckers, uh, like the, the, the ring TV and shit, it, it, it's agenda-driven already with what you're telling me. Oh, uh, I would have to really, uh, really... I'll take that. You know what? I'll take that information down. Yeah, I'll now, take a look at it if they got it on IMDb or something like that. But I think that's pretty interesting. Um, you know, I actually covered that Paul and Jacobs fight, and, you know, I was fucking, um, you know, at the way in. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, Quillen looks majorly distracted for that fight. I don't know. You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. And you'll see. And you'll see. Because that fault. Yeah, I'm going to have to check that out. That's pretty crazy, man. Um. Uh, now that I gave y'all the appetizer, y'all want the meat and the potatoes. Y'all want the main course. First and Nigga, just say what you yeah, you, you, yeah, you, know you, want get, you know You know 2K <laughs> done only had his powdered egg shake this today. Man, I know, he, 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 you know what? You know what? I was drinking them eggs and crystals on the phone. Y'all niggas didn't even hear it. That's why you can't hear shit right now. Repeat yourself. <laughs> Look, I'm going to keep it short and simple. Them low blows, them y'all cry baby casuals, y'all talking about, screaming about that Andre wore through. They were not low blows. They were on the belt line. Stop your fucking crying and all that little bullshit. I pretty much think we went in all early on, y'all motherfuckers, but I like to say this. In the words of Twine the Divine Liberty, Y'all can eat a syphilis dick. <laughs> Damn. Oh, Damn. Well, Yard Damn. core. Yard core. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I guess.
guess I got the final blow of the week, man. Um, shit, I, I we touched on everything pretty much already in some of our topics, but I just wanted to chime in, I guess, a little bit as far as um the mag the the article that was put out um that Bernard had posted as far as uh Andre Ward being disrespected and whatnot. Um, I mean, it's time for us to really look. I won't say us but I want to say American fans, the American fan base to, to look internally at ourselves and, and, and look at our faults, man. Um, I know Bo puts this out there a lot in his vid- in some of his videos and when he goes live, um, examine your, um, your moral compass, um, examine the reasons why you're not getting behind, you know, this newer crop of uh, fighters that are on more on the positive side you know, um, don't have necessarily all the same things out of the ring that Floyd Mayweather had going. I mean, you know, you got the Andre Wards, the Shakur Stevenson, you know, uh, the Errol Spence Juniors that, you know, you know what you're seeing. You're, we're, we're seeing greatness right here in some of these guys. Um, you know, um, just examine your moral compass and, and examine why you're not getting behind these guys. These are guys that have all represented your country. You know what I'm saying? Even on an amateur level. So why not give them the same respect that you're giving, you know, this the Eastern Euro block that seems to be developing right now promotionally. Um, I mean, it seems like we come back to this a lot. You know, I definitely want to try to avoid the race, bringing up race. But like I said, that's why I said examine your, your moral compass and, you know, and you'll, you'll really realize that, you know, you need to get behind these guys. Like I said, that they – they fought for your country and defended it as far as uh internationally in international competitions. So I mean that that's an honor in itself and it shows they take pride in, in, in nationalism at the same time. Um and for them not to get the same respect, you know, uh on a pro level after doing such things and accomplishing great feats is it, pretty ridiculous. You know, um, we we got MMA, which which is fly by night, and you know Chris Henderson hit it, uh, you know nail in the head. You know, what I'm saying uh, people are gonna root for what they identify with, and I I mean, shit. If you look in the past, you know white fighters weren't always necessarily super successful, but you know they were competitive still, and you guys there was still a, a big boxing fan base, which we're hoping. Um, with this move back to the, the free TV, and we're seeing more of it come back, you know. So maybe we could get back to the era of, uh, you know, where we had Jerry Cooney in there, whose jab didn't break when, as uh, Samuel Jackson said. But, you know, we could get some of that fan base interested in boxing again, you know what I'm saying, which is uh, what we need to make this this following great. I mean, it's already picking up 2017 in a big year. And shit, that's probably the most long winded shit you're ever gonna get out of me on this show. But as far as that, I'm yeah. good. Um Yeah, let's just really examine and, and get behind our, our boys over here, man. Um it shouldn't take them be having to be become champions to develop that following. It should happen at the prospect level like we see in the UK. That you know, even you know, these guys are able to make regional titles and make a living off of that. We don't have that kind of support here in the States, you know what I'm saying, which I think sucks. So, I mean, um, let's clean it up, man. We we got a lot of talent here in the States, and it all deserves to be to have to be respected. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, pretty much, man. You ain't got to, you know what I'm saying, you ain't got to root for the man, but you give him respect when it's due. And ain't no reason why Ward shouldn't get respect after what he did this weekend, so. Yeah, I mean, this is the guy that he knocked out the he knocked out a boom. You know what I'm saying? The big bad wolf. You know what I'm saying? And definitively, can't take nothing away from that man now. Even with the the, the low blow uh, shit that that people want to put out there, he went out there and took this man's heart, a bully. That that man was quitting already. Third round, gassed out. That man. He didn't want to see that for fucking nine more rounds, or you know, for the rest of the fight. He could, yeah. you know, what I'm saying yeah. it's a, t- a test of men. You know, like TK says a lot of times, that alpha male. I mean, that's what it comes down to. I'm a bigger man than you sometimes. I mean, that that 
That's what the, the, the one-on-one combat is about. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's got to respect it for that. You got to. Um, I'm going to let everybody give out their handles and whatnot before we get up out here, starting with 2K. Where can they find you at? You know what I'm saying? What up, what up, 2K, man? You can catch me on the new Prodigy of Boxing Talk, formerly the Gods of Boxing Talk. Catch me on that gay-ass, uh, punk-ass, bitch-ass social media website, Twitter, you know what I'm saying, at Boxing Gods. Catch me on the movement uh, boxing group on Facebook. Catch me on East Wit Boxing on Facebook. You can catch me on uh, a lot of different places, man. I'll be around smacking niggas up and shit. Y'all know what it is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 2K a little bit tired after the, the meat and potatoes. But that, that's, that's the kind of calm as we all get from them. <laughs> um, let me pass it on the door, man. Where can they find you at? No, man. They can find me at Truth and Facts About Boxing. You can catch me on probably one of the best, fastest growing things for social media, Twitter, at capital T for truth, <laughs> underscore capital F for fact box one. The company, uh, man. Also, uh, Instagram. <laughs> Donovan and Matt with a group. Donovan and with a group. Also, uh, also <laughs> Instagram at truth, underscore fact box one, uh, and pound for pound boxing. Hey, uh, Kevin Hart. Guards Grill, Hands on Fire Podcast, and right here on the movement, these uh, three goofy motherfuckers, and my partner in crime, who is the new king of the mind, who defeated Yusuf, and was and chased away that big-headed, punk-ass, light-skinned 2K, Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> All I heard was Bo was the Donovan McNabb of the group. Uh, I'm done. That shit is funny as fuck. <laughs> Catch me on the movement uh, Instagram page at D-A-M-U-V-M-E-N-T-B-P. You can catch me on the movement Twitter page, capital D, A, capital M, U, V, M, E, N, T, capital B for boxing. Uh, you can also catch me in the movement Facebook group, as well as Eastwick, talking boxing the bullshit, SSS, boxing talk, we live Eastwick boxing, and uh, talking boxing the bullshit. Ring IQ and a few others, and you can also uh, catch me in the I- on the IBO website uh, in the comments. You know, <laughs> giving them a big up. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm trying to push the IBO man. To, uh, man, get the fuck out of here. Hey, man. shut your ass up. Hey, shout out to the IBO man. Sign me up, y'all. I'm trying to get a job with y'all, man. Working with y'all, man. Shoot, I'll be uh, fucking for y'all, man. I'll push y'all shit. Shout out to IBO. You can also catch Bernard. Getting smacked up and punked and shit by all the real niggas and all the groups and shit. Yeah, get out of here. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> the, only, the, only casual, the only casual allowed in these boxing circles is Bernard. So <laughs> 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 rule number 11, per Wilson. Yo, <laughs> rule number 11. Hell yeah, they got a rule set up for it. You know how I'm really getting. Um, let me pass it on to Big Cool, man. Where can they find you at? Uh, YouTube, Colossal Boxing Talk CBT. Twitter, Colossal underscore CBT. 
uh, Facebook, Eastwick, Colossal Boston Talk, the Movement, Championship Rounds, my timeline, your girl's timeline. I'm just joking. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, shout out to a new addition, um, Danny Garcia, aka Timothy Medina, brought him along, you know, in the CBT. So expect him to drop some shit this week. So yeah, you know. And catch me on all the niggas channel, channels, you know what I'm saying? I still ain't been a, on on the Prodigy of Boxing Talk uh, channel. Big head nigga, big, uh, 2K just be too busy for uh, a big cool, but we we going to make that No, he just a hating ass nigga. He just a hating ass nigga. That's all I mean. <laughs> Yeah. Hold up. Uh, that nigga Big Cool be too busy eating, man. I be trying to get that nigga on. Y'all, y'all better cut that out. Man, I, I'll tell you, stop making me feel bad about them goddamn peanut butter sandwiches. Ain't no <laughs> crap. <laughs> hey, 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 man. Hey, man. You know, you know, we hey. them boys, too. Far bologna still hey, go, go, go get a good go. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with the peanut butter. Ain't nothing wrong with a peanut butter jelly sandwich. Biggie Ho showed up, and you can still have a career in these motherfuckers. Exactly. Yep. Y'all should have talked about that little shit that he pulled at the press conference at uh, Canelo with Triple G uh, in London. That motherfucker was way in the back with the microphone talking shit. He made sure he. Oh to wow! To the he door. was at the press conference. Yeah, I, I gotta he check stood, it out. He stood right close to the door. He asked Canelo, uh, "Why did he drop the uh, WBC girls and shit?" He was trying to troll and shit. He had a question for uh, Canelo. He had a question for Triple G. But he was right in the back, close to the door, to make sure one of them was got up, he was gone. Remember, this is the same cat that was talking shit to Percy and trying to throw shit and move shit out of the way. The motherfucker didn't speak English. Dude, so the hoe, man. Really, really the hoe, man. Wow. Man, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to go back and check that, man. Hopefully they got that, got that with Billy Ho on, uh, on YouTube. I was actually catching some of the uh, press conference for that today. Yeah, you I, missed I it, man. You Billy missed Ho. it. You tagged me in, and I was like, this motherfucker. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Just drop the Saunders, man. Just it's Billy, Billy Ho. That's his name from now on, Billy the Ho. No, no. <laughs> No Joe, no Saunders, nigga. Billy the Hope. Um, I'm actually hearing that who was saying he's gonna be on the undercard. Uh, he might, nah, he, he might be on the undercard. I think Frank Warren. Frank Warren. It's the same day. You know, oh. uh, double sight. Uh, same day. Uh, whatever type of shit against a weak ass opponent. Okay. Okay. Of course. All right. Um. Well, let me go ahead and throw my my little hand out there. Per first, I want to say big up to Bernard. He's been uh definitely keeping the the um the social media entertaining. No, I love, I love, boo, I love, love booty, and, 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 and bringing sexism to motherfucking boxing. So I appreciate you, bro. <laughs> 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 Generally, 
Um, with that said, man, uh, probably one of our better shows, more informative shows, man. Um, you know what I'm saying? We're going to keep bringing it to you. Till then, you can catch us next week, man. Um, Sunday on our regular time. All right? Peace.